Okay, so thank you very much uh, all for joining and for your patience. Uh, uh, always it's a, it's a bit of a trouble with technology and trying to connect. But I think this is the main reason why, why we're all here today. And it's, it's, it should be a great day. Every time we talk about connectivity and connecting minds, something good should come out of it. Um, thank you all for joining and uh, being with us. Uh, this activity is part of a great effort to, to connect communities, to connect especially young entrepreneurs and innovative minds for a better future and uh, for more uh, impactful businesses that will solve some of our uh, pressing issues that I think we all in the region are facing and uh, um, especially now amidst COVID, uh, uh, some of our problems, regional problems are becoming even more evident. Um, my name is Ranik Bego, and I represent Innovation Center Kosovo uh, as an executive director. And together with um, uh, Mr. Marko Savkovic and Miodrag Milicevic, uh, Mr. Savkovic uh, from Belgrade Fund for Political Excellence, and um, Mr. Miodrag from NGO Active, uh, we will be your host, so to say, today. And uh, we are very happy with the panels we have put and the, the great uh, names, so to say, uh, stars of our communities, which uh, we have on board that uh, uh, will be presented today. And hopefully uh, this is just the start of some of the good uh, partnerships that uh, could be potentially uh, lying ahead of us in the future. Um, I just need to ask uh, one of you to, to, to make sure that you have the microphone off, and I think I can do that as well. So here you go. Now I think it's better. Um, uh, today, uh, I, will, uh, I, I will say it, it coincides with a meeting which we have in Washington, uh, but frankly saying uh, we don't like to get into that because what is very important is uh, that no one forced us to get together. And I think this is, from my perspective, this is a very special moment because this, this meeting, this joint efforts, I think they come bottom up. And I think if we want to solve our problems, uh, this is the type of initiatives that uh, we as people of the region should, should have. Uh, uh, no, one, no one really should be twisting our arms in, in order to offer solutions for our own problems. Uh, so, uh, basically, I mentioned that we have a great list of speakers. I'm very excited to hear so many of you and with so many that I have planned to have calls, I will be meeting you today and hopefully we can follow up on that. Very briefly uh, about Innovation Center Kosovo, just so it's on record. We are a non-governmental organization which was founded uh, in 2012 with the aim of supporting uh, young entrepreneurs and helping young innovative minds creating sustainable businesses. Um, uh, the founders, uh, which was the Kosovo ICT Association and its members uh, were supported by the uh, Norwegian uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, have really thought about partnering and really making a different, uh, different uh, let's say, value proposition uh, when it comes to Kosovo's economic offering. We saw great talent and potential uh, among our youth, and uh, it's, I think, a subject which we will discuss how, how much we have achieved as a community in order to tap in into our uh, opportunities and our talent. But uh, obviously there are, some, uh, there are some pressing issues which, uh, which are uh, evident and which we hopefully will talk about it. Uh, as a center, we have supported uh, quite a lot of startups. Some of them are successful. Some of, uh, some of them will be with us today. Uh, our focus is really in, 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 in trying to make uh, Kosovo and why not the region a better place to live and uh, keep our youth in this country. And I think this will also uh, be a subject for which we will discuss together today. Without any uh, further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Marko Savkovic from Belgrade Fund for Political Excellence as one of the organizers, main organizers. And we as ICK were uh, happy to join them on this event. Uh, to have opening and welcoming remarks. From our end, thank you very much, and uh, I wish you a, a great event. Uh, Mr. Marco, you're, you're, you're on. Hello, I hope you can hear me. I had some slight technical difficulties, and that's one of the reasons why uh, I was late. Uh, so Wi-Fi doesn't work when you, when you need it the most. Uh, 
Um, and I'm really happy to be uh, with you here today. Uh, as you said, this uh, only happens to coincide with historic meeting in, in, in Washington. And uh, yes, we were not <laughs> forced by anyone to meet, which is, uh, I think, always a, a great thing. Um, this is a culmination of a three year long uh, project, which took us through uh, some journey from uh, architects and uh, urban planners back in uh, September, uh, long, uh, almost four years ago, uh, to uh, photographers and writers. And uh, we have uh, been organizing together with our fantastic partners from uh, D4D, NGO Active and TransConflict, uh, very, very, I would say, interesting events. And uh, we really tried to push the envelope and really bring professionals from different groups uh, together. And uh, I think that we have succeeded. And this is also next step in excellent cooperation that we have with uh, Innovation Center Kosovo following what was a highly successful study visit to startup and uh, IT hub uh, seen in Belgrade some, some uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, this is uh, most definitely not my field. Uh, and uh, while my field of research is more related to uh, conflict resolution and conflict management, uh, and I would say studying how this region transforms itself and becomes a part of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, part of uh, developed and more uh, more progressive, perhaps, uh, world. Uh, we are uh, really, really excited. Uh, and uh, as an organization, uh, we are uh, very open to hearing people who have succeeded uh, in actually uh, building their businesses and uh, sending a different image. Uh, of uh, this region as a region where it is actually uh, possible to build something from scratch and to create a future not only for oneself who is an entrepreneur, but also for people who are working for that particular individual. Uh, so yes, it is going to be, I, I, I'd say, also a, a study in, uh, in excellence, uh, but also a study in people who have pioneered something uh, in, in, in this region, which I also think, I mean, the whole project Changing Minds and uh, part of what uh, our organizations have been doing for the past, I'd say now five, six, maybe even seven years have been pioneering efforts into bringing two societies closer, closer together. So that would be it for me. And I'm looking forward to uh, joining you and talking more uh, at the last panel. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. Now I'm taking the role of the host <laughs> since you joined. and. Uh, uh, definitely, I think uh, we've had also, you mentioned, a great cooperation with our study visit in Belgrade of startups. Uh, I think many good operation, uh, cooperations came out of that meeting. Uh, I believe there was more than 10 startups from Kosovo, which for the first time ever visited Belgrade. Uh, we hope to have a, a same uh, sort of visit, pay back to, to Pristina and Kosovo, why not? We would be happy to host and uh, show around some uh, uh, some of our success stories as a community, and some of them will definitely be, definitely be presenting today. Uh, next, I will uh, maybe just uh, opening and welcome remarks from uh, Mr. Mio Dragnilicevic from uh, NGO Active. Um, please, if you could uh, start. Absolutely, yes. Uh, <clears throat> if you can hear me, of course, good morning also from my side. I'm very pleased actually to uh, greet you all today. And of course, um, very happy that the uh, internet connection, at least, you know, in my case, you know, it's uh, worked, you know, pretty much stable. Um, the reason why I mentioned that and why I highlighted at the very beginning, of course, that we struggled for the past six months basically to achieve the stability, you know, in the Wi-Fi connections in the north. And uh, honestly, I became a little bit desperate, you know. So, of course, this is not for the entry in, uh, intro point, basically, I wanted to make. So instead of that, of course, I'll, um, I, I'll really honestly start, you know, with the classic ones, of course. Uh, uh, good morning uh, to all, of course, and the special greetings to the panelists, distinguished colleagues, of course, and in, in particular, the representative of uh, civil society and others uh, who managed to join us today at today's forum. On behalf of NGO Active, um, it is a great honor and pleasure to welcome you all, um, the number of prominent companies, CSOs, media, colleagues, of course, and others. On this occasion, I'm honored uh, to have the opportunity in joining my colleagues in opening the first edition of uh, Changing Minds Forum, uh, but also saluting them for taking the initiative for designing and organizing today's event. I'm especially happy 
that this gathering is taking place basically in spite of uh, global challenges caused by the pandemic of coronavirus. It wasn't easy and required enormous efforts by each and one of us, of course, in overcoming uh, other less visible obstacles. Uh, despite certain progress over the years, and as you noted, 20 years um, after the conflict and seven years after the landmark normalization of relations agreement of Brussels in April 2013, there is a widespread notion that meaningful civic dialogue and especially across ethnic lies is absent. The Brussels dialogue normalization dialogue has stagnated for years. Let's be honest about it. In terms of present time, uh, we see a society that is to a greater or lesser degree divided, where people, especially youth, have limited contact with each other, often non-existent contact with each other, and especially between youth and where new generations do not have the language skills of their parents and grandparents. And we know it. Besides that, I would also like to bear in mind uh, the long-lasting challenge uh, of our societies uh, which are facing burning in the everyday life and affecting our economy, mobility and prosperity, not only in Kosovo, but across the entire region. Nowadays, we can really honestly hardly talk about the substantial connectivity, joint regional prospect without mentioning open community dialogue, mutual trust and reconciliation between two ethnic communities, Serbs and Albanians, which is prerequisite for advancement of mutual relations. Not to forget one of the greatest challenge of today's society in Western Balkans countries, brain drain. This is also a serious problem for the entire region, which requires, uh, requires not individual, but rather joint EU and the Western Balkan countries approach in finding a common response to the endemic situation and motivate youngsters to explore possibilities within their own countries. So many of us rightfully will ask question, what is then a common denominator that may drag interest of youngsters and different community groups to collaborate today? And how do we move forward from there? So this is not an easy answer, but at least we can start thinking to use and utilize modern technologies and growing IT sector to shift the societal focus and let's be brave to find out uh, what possibilities they will give. I believe that they offer a fresh and almost endless opportunities in bridging the divide, which may boost the local and regional IT economical potential and create a new era of Generation Z, whose coding language is, despite ethnical diversity, universal and understandable to different ethnic groups. The IT masterminds could be and shall be front runners in this technological revolution. Also, young people across our region have a strong European identity and are eager to participate in building a better living environment that they currently have. Our role is to facilitate their development and give them an opportunity in advancing their individual skills and explore further its potential. In this respect, and it, it is of utmost importance that the government, including the donor community, recognize growing potential and adopt mid and long-term strategy particularly in this field. The civil society must insist in recognition of the value of modern technologies and IT sector as the one with the greatest potential and shall undoubtedly use its abilities to advocate for a strategic approach to be undertaken by the central level institutions. Moreover, it is a vital interest in new exchange programs and new uh, other practical tools that will be utilized in their future work. Finally, by using this approach, we will be able to see more digital and less political dimension that we all are exposed in everyday life, which is after all very much needed. I strongly believe that the development of such strategic approach will be beneficial to many of us and will contribute to creation of an additional layer of stability, well-being and numerous opportunities that could enrich interaction between citizens, which is of an utmost importance to both sides. Therefore, I look honestly forward to participating in today's Changing Mind Forum. Listen and learn the various and various challenges from our panelists, widen the perspective on what brings us together and potentially contribute with some fresh ideas uh, for the future initiatives. In the end, honestly, I would like really to thank you all and especially not only our partners from Belgrade, but also Innovation Center of Kosovo for taking a large portion, you know, in organizing today's forum. Uh, and I hopefully this is just the beginning, of course, of the future collaboration where we can enrich and expand, uh, extend and expand this forum actually beyond something that was envisioned at the very first stage. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Nidrag. Uh, uh, I believe you, you just uh, laid the foundation for the great uh, panels, which will come up next. But uh, I would also like to extend a, a special uh, thanks to our teams uh, who have put up a great event, uh, despite the difficult September, it's a busy month because everyone comes back from holidays, tanned and ready to do work. So it was a good moment and a good momentum to, to really have this event before uh, we get too busy, hopefully with good things in uh, October and November, there's a lot of events going on. So we would like also to encourage our communities, uh, while many of these events will be happening online and hopefully some, most of them in English as well, uh, maybe have an opportunity to, to join, follow each other's activities and potentially join. I know that uh, I'm following closely and I get the invitation from ICT Hub Belgrade events and uh, looking forward to joining some of their events uh, later this year. And hopefully we can have the same um, with uh, ICK's events and other communities. Uh, we will now take a very short break before we move uh, immediately into our panel. There will be some music uh, going on and then we will join in less than four minutes uh, with our first panel. First panel, uh, Ecosystems Overview and Building Regional Cooperation. I will be moderating that panel and I thank you very much for participating in this uh, opening remarks. We'll see you in a very short.
Okay, uh, welcome back. And uh, we're moving uh, immediately with our first panel. And uh, this panel will be talking about uh, ecosystems overview and building regional cooperation. So uh, definitely, uh, when we started 2020, it was not uh, 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 it was not the year that we thought we were going to be. Uh, we had obviously different plans. And uh, it looks quite different from what we expected. Uh, it, it definitely was a, a rough start, uh, but hopefully we can pick up. Uh, while ecosystems had uh, different, let's say, uh, picture and image, uh, COVID changed everything. It seems like it, and and it's going to shift. It's going to shift quite a lot. I think that will be the subject of discussions, but definitely we also want to look into opportunities and how we can build, uh, what what can we build from uh, these ecosystems, but at the same time build a regional cooperation. We have um, a great panel, which I would like to, to, to introduce, and then hopefully uh, have a discussion, open discussion with each and every one of these amazing uh, names uh, to, to, to see how we can move forward. Uh, first is Dritan Hapsiu from Cactus and Recura, also is an uh, ICK board member. Mr. Arian Zeka is from American Chamber of Commerce in Kosovo. Mr. Mark Korak is from Innovation Center Mitrovica North. Uh, Tamara Dunzerovic from Serbian Chamber of Commerce, welcome. Sanja Ivanic from French Serbian Chamber of Commerce. And then Mr. Kosta Andres from ICT Hub Belgrade. Welcome uh, you all. Uh, maybe my first general question, uh, because it's also, I think, a good moment to, to know each other, uh, to just a short introduction, maybe five minutes of, uh, of uh, a bit about yourself uh, uh, and also the organizations which you work and uh, what, what you represent. Uh, I will start with uh, Mr. Dritan Hapsiu. And uh, then I will, uh, Mr. Costa Andres, uh, We'll go next, and then I will invite uh, the rest. Thank you very much for participating, uh, Mr. Trizan. Hello, everybody. I hope that uh, you can hear me well. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be today uh, here and to meet uh, new faces. Uh, most of you uh, I don't know, and I'm happy to uh, also introduce myself, but also, uh, and more importantly, get to know you and, and understand what you are doing and uh, how you are doing what you are doing. Uh, there was a great speech by uh, Mio Drag. Uh, I love that. I would like, uh, love to have a copy of that. Uh, it, it was sort of everything in one pot. Uh, and uh, um, it was also inspiring for me uh, to hear uh, that sort of uh, thinking and that sort of uh, 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 thoughtful uh, messaging in, in times uh, that we are today uh, and what we are facing. So briefly, uh, I was born in Pristina. I'm a trilingual, uh, raised trilingual, so I speak fluently uh, my mother tongue, uh, Albanian, Turkish, my grandmother, and uh, Serbian. I won actually a competition in Serbia, uh, seventh grade, uh, the best novel in Serbian, although I was Albanian. So I can assure you my language is still very much alive in that sense. Um, uh, what is important to know is that my first company uh, was established in 1992 in Pristina, IT. And that's what I've been doing all of my life, uh, most of my life. Uh, IT, information and communication technologies, uh, beginning with hardware, then switching to software, then switching to services, uh, education, uh, established more than a dozen companies uh, in my life, uh, then switched uh, uh, partially to financial advisory. Uh, there was an opportunity that I saw uh, in the uh, region uh, to offer financial advisory and merger and acquisition consultancy to uh, young and established companies. And uh, that is what I'm also doing uh, currently. And I also have a third life, and that third life is linked to uh, many other uh, civil society and, and everyday life uh, um, engagements. I started working with a group of young high school students uh, in 1994 called Post Pessimists. Uh, later on in 1997, uh, 
I was in charge of coordinating the debate club of Pristina. We won a couple of cha championships in the Western Balkans with that team. One of our team members is the mayor of Pristina today. Um, uh, then uh, worked uh, in an institute of information technology promoting the uh, education in uh, ICT since 1999. And then switched to many other activities such as uh, being one of the co-founders of STIC, the Kosovo ICT Association, and also uh, being one of the promoters and co-founders of uh, ICK, which uh, I'm very much happy that has evolved and has become what is uh, today. Uh, today I sit on the board of uh, Lombardi, which is a cultural uh, center in prison. Uh, I sit on the board of uh, ICK and most probably very soon I will be on the board of uh, first female football club uh, uh, in uh, Pristina. So many different things. Uh, uh, I don't know if my five minutes have expired, but uh, I would use maybe a minute more just to uh, give my thoughts on what we are what you are doing and what we all are doing here and that is the this is very important we are such a small region uh, we, we are such a, s a small countries in in uh, general uh, we have so many things to share to link to work uh, together on uh, and uh, we have to overcome absolutely uh, the challenges and, and the borders and whatever is in between uh, us all together uh, as a region uh, because we can offer much more to each other as well as much more together to the others. Uh, and that, that is what uh, we have been striving uh, to do uh, despite of all uh, the challenges uh, which are mostly imposed by the politics and all of our uh, surroundings. But anyhow, uh, I think this is a very uh, good uh, initiative and I, I look forward to work with all of you and to connect with all of you in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Driton. And, um... I also, from ICK, we're always thankful for the support we get, uh, not, only, uh, not only as a board member, uh, but uh, uh, always for the community. So definitely uh, very much appreciated for these uh, opening words. Uh, I would like maybe just to move a little bit toward the, uh, because uh, we try not to go in very orderly way, uh, same way as we are in the Balkans. But uh, we'd like to go maybe to Chambers of Commerce and maybe Tamara, uh, Ms. Tamar uh, Dunjerovic from Serbian Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, opening remarks and um, a bit about the work you're doing and, and, and your efforts during these times. Thank you for joining. Okay, hello from my side. I'm glad to be part of this uh, fantastic group of people and to be able to let's say, share uh, ideas and experience in how to build, build um, cooperation about, among business communities and to learn uh, and to ch exchange uh, some uh, uh, current activities in um, ecosystem startups and innovation companies. Um, so my name is Tamara Dunjerovic. I am uh, working in the Center for SMEs. So my department is in charge for SMEs in general, but uh, including startups and different segments uh, of uh, the economy, like uh, um, social Chamber. entrepreneurship, women, youth. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is the largest uh, business association uh, in Serbia. So we are uh, bringing together 350,000 uh, businesses uh, in, a, in a joint uh, system. And we do have uh, 17 regional offices uh, throughout Serbia and performing our activities uh, through them. So this is something as a, as a introduction about my organization and my department is mostly focused uh, on advocating for uh, better conditions for SMEs uh, to access finance. Uh, this is something that is common for all the groups uh, of the businesses and in different segments of their development. So we have internal capacities to support uh, SMEs in access finance, like standardized service, 
for them to join and do have uh, different activities. Uh, I guess that we will talk about that uh, later on during the panel to bring together small and large companies and to enable them to uh, find the partners. We are also as a chamber active in uh, supporting intra-regional dialogue. So two chambers, Kosovo and Serbia, started this uh, a long time ago, so even more than, let's say, seven years, 2013, initiated intra-regional and partner communication to bring together uh, businesses from Kosovo and Serbia to work closely. And uh, as you mentioned, we are all small countries, but with huge potential altogether. So two chambers initiated, so Kosovo and Serbia, a regional initiative, which is um, uh, regional uh, uh, um, uh, Western Balkan six uh, chamber in Western Forum. So ch six chambers together with Slovenia and uh, Croatia are in close cooperation, building a platform which is supported by the EU, EU chamber and um, chambers of Austria and Germany. It's a place or uh, a platform which is also recognized on a, on a larger scale and whomever is interested to cooperate with the companies within the region would approach uh, a regional chamber uh, uh, for that. So I hope I present mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a very good introduction and uh, just to, to get an overview of the work uh, you, you guys are doing. Uh, obviously, there, there's uh, uh, some initiatives and definitely we can build uh, upon them. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kostandres from ICT Hub, uh, pleasure to have you here. We're also a partner in, in, in some activities and um, would like to hear more uh, about you and your work you're, you're doing. I think it would be very interesting, especially for startup communities and people who are involved in the ecosystem. Thank you for joining us. And your sure, uh, sure. Thank you, Renik. Uh, uh, good morning, good day, everyone. Uh, it's it's pleasure pleasure to be here. My name is Costa. Uh, I have a great honor to to lead a team of twenty five people uh, uh, working within ICT Hub. Uh, very shortly, we're a private company, uh, so throughout the day you will meet uh, uh, some of my colleagues, and you will see that uh, uh, basically our, our motivation is always to find find new partnership in order to 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 build our operations. Um, uh, our strong focus are startups. We started in 2013, uh, but something which is the which is the I would say value proposition for uh, for the uh, startup community here in Serbia, uh, but also we have operation in Bosnia and in in, in Montenegro, uh, is that uh, uh, we work closely with them with startups which are which are in something which we call a seed stage. Though those would be startups which are already making some kind of revenues. And uh, from, the, from there, we help them uh, connect with traditional companies. That's one. And something which, which we did for the region, which, which was quite uh, a pioneer venture, is that we formed ICT Hub Venture, which is a first uh, private uh, uh, VC-like fund, uh, which invests uh, throughout the C region. So that, that's one. Behind me, there is a probably, not probably, but the biggest uh, co-working space uh, uh, here, uh, here in the region. We also have foot in the ground in two smaller cities in Serbia and, and in Podgorica and in Bosnia, uh, as I said. Besides that, what you think it, 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 it's a, it's a, and something with, which, which, which can we uh, uh, touch upon throughout the uh, panel is that uh, uh, we built uh, uh, different consultancy services, uh, which are usually uh, um, uh, used by uh, either large multinational corporations or um, uh, I would say medium-sized uh, domestic-owned companies, something which we call uh, uh, digital transformation or corporate corporate innovation, something which we, we have been also discussing with uh, with uh, Uranik. Uh, also, what I would like to, to, to put out here today is that, um, uh, uh, the, as you said, the whole region is is, uh, is is that small that. We use also these kind of events to, to meet somebody new. And as, as somebody who is representing a private sector, we always look to, to find, uh, uh, to meet new people, to find, uh, uh, to find new companies which we can partner up. Uh, so throughout the days, uh, uh, myself and but also my colleagues, 
uh, we'll we'll try to reach out and try try to build something from there. So uh, for the end, th thank you for inviting us, and it's a pleasure to be here. And as Uranik said, uh, we had the pleasure to host uh, a dozen of uh, uh, companies, tech startups from Kosovo. I think it was two years ago, something like that. So. Uh, of course, you're welcome again as soon as this Corona thing stops or, or, or slows down. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Costa. Definitely, there's there's great things ahead, I believe, and uh, we look forward to that. Um, uh, I would like to invite now Mr. Arian Zeka from American Chamber of Commerce in Kosovo. Um, um, maybe also uh, some public recognition. Uh, Amcham in Kosovo has really, really uh, never stopped working, even during COVID, for its members and the community. It has been the voice, let's say, the business community needed it uh, during these difficult times. And uh, they're a great contributor in building a sustainable ecosystem in Kosovo. And hopefully, together with you as community, we can also look into some uh, regional cooperation. Uh, Mr. Zeka, uh, thank you for joining us. So good morning, everyone, once again. Uh, thank you, Ronik. Thank you for the invitation. It's a real honor and privilege. And also, thank you for your kind words. I do hope you mean it. So the American Chamber of Commerce in Kosovo has uh, been around uh, for uh, 16 years now in Kosovo. So we've been he established in 2004. And of course, we are uh, accredited by United States Chamber of Commerce. And also, we are part of the European uh, Network of American Chambers of Commerce, uh, which is a network of 45 MCHAMs in 43 countries of uh, Europe. And we do support a lot uh, regional cooperation and we do uh, organize many activities which aim at uh, say bringing businesses from different countries of the region uh, uh, together. In 2013 and way a couple of years before the Berlin process uh, started, uh, AmChamps in uh, Western Balkans uh, initiated what we call this regional, joint regional advocacy and investment uh, platform. We met in Tirana, Albania for the first time and the next year in 2014, we hosted a meeting in Pristina and we also had uh, uh, representatives of AmChamps Serbia attending the this event in Pristina, and then we met in Belgrade, in Skopje, in Sarajevo, and uh, for some reason the initiative started. It's always uh, politics to be blamed, even in our particular case, although we represent American uh, commercial interests, but uh, uh, there were kind of different actions on both, on all of the countries, uh, uh, lateral uh, trade barriers imposed in our particular case by Kosovo then, which uh, prevented MCHEMS from organizing further regional uh, regional events. Uh, but we never, uh, nevertheless, we never stopped believing uh, in the uh, importance of regional uh, cooperation. And uh, someone mentioned earlier, I think it was Mr. Savkovic, I, I might be uh, wrong, who said that today's event, your event, coincides with the, uh, with the meeting in uh, Washington uh, DC and the American Chamber of Commerce uh, has supported this uh, initiative of U.S. administration to try to bring the two countries together by uh, by pushing them towards an economic agreement first. And I think there's a reason. There's a fair reason why they're doing it because all politicians are bad politicians in general, and I think it's uh, the the ball should be passed to the businesses and to the business people and entrepreneurs in, uh, uh, in the two countries and in the whole countries and in the entire region as well. And I think we can uh, uh, play much better than them. And if we are able to, uh, to, to create stronger economic ties, uh, then we are going to be able to solve what is the number one problem for the people in all the countries of the region, which is unemployment and socioeconomic uh, problems in uh, general, which Again, politics and politicians are failing to uh, to resolve. Uh, I mentioned a couple of in uh, some initiatives of the American Chambers of Commerce in the in the region. Uh, uh, this is when it comes to the to AmChamps in Western Balkans. But again, uh, as I said, we are part of a wider uh, network of European AmChamps, and we meet at least three years with other uh, with other peers, with other uh, counterparts in uh, in Europe, once in DC, 
once in Brussels and once uh, in another country. Last year, uh, Amsham's met in Belgrade. Unfortunately, I could not attend because I was in, uh, we were at that time with our board of governors in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, but uh, uh, we, as I said, we, uh, we do cooperate uh, with, with each other as well. Last year, we were happy to host a, uh, the youth sector, a group of entrepreneurs uh, organized, uh, uh, who traveled from Serbia under the organization of the youth sector of Atlantic Council. And they were here in Pristina and uh, we invited some of our members from MCM. I, I, I might be wrong, but I think Kuranik was there as well. And we uh, had this uh, informal networking event and the idea was to bring entrepreneurs and business uh, people from Serbia and Kosovo together and try to talk uh, about uh, cooperation opportunities. Although, although this was at a difficult uh, time uh, when Kosovo had imposed uh, tariff uh, measures against Serbia and practically banning the, all the imports from Serbia at that time. But nevertheless, the situation is much better now. We don't have any uh, technical barriers and uh, we, we, we share the same position as the U.S. administration that there should be no, there should be no, uh, no barriers of any kind between or, or by any country in the region uh, which handles uh, economic uh, prospects and opportunities for creation of new, uh, of new jobs. We're looking very much forward to, uh, to, to today afternoon agreement in Washington, D.C. What we know by now is that it's going to be largely about uh, economic uh, matters or only about economic uh, matters. We expect the uh, functionalization of the railway connection between uh, Kosovo and Serbia and also uh, technical modalities of the airline uh, uh, agreement or letter of intent which was signed early uh, this year. There are still open issues. A couple of days ago, I was asked by a journalist from, for, uh, from BBC in Serbia, uh, from Belgrade, I think her name was Maria Jankovic, if I recall uh, correctly, and she said, Mr. Zega, I want to know what are these uh, open economic issues between Kosovo and Serbia, because uh, one would believe that having two countries which are part of the Central European Free Trade uh, uh, Agreement, there would be no open economic issues. And I said, well, Maria, actually there are plenty of uh, plenty of economic uh, issues. Uh, we don't recognize, uh, uh, Kosovo and Serbia don't recognize each other's documents, the sanitary and other documents. And this, of course, delays uh, customs clearance and border uh, past the crossing uh, procedures for businesses. And so it uh, somehow uh, hinders the free flow of goods. On the other hand, the uh, European Union has invested millions in creating an uh, integrated border management system, uh, which is not being uh, implemented again. And uh, maybe you've heard Ambassador Grenell, uh, you President, the U.S. President uh, Donald Trump's special envoy for peace agreement between Kosovo and Serbia, mentioning, mentioning also a case of uh, rental cars not being able to pass from one country to, to the other. So uh, just imagine how would an American traveling to Belgrade and trying to rent a car and trying to go to Pristina or uh, vice versa uh, would think that you're, you're, you're renting a car from an international uh, franchise and you're still not being able to fully utilize uh, this, uh, this service that you're, you're purchasing. Anyways, I'm going to stop here. Uh, it was my privilege once again. Uranik uh, already did a uh, public uh, commanding uh, uh, of, of Ramchen for what we did, but I think the organization that needs to be commanded here and for all of their efforts, which are uh, constant efforts throughout the year and uh, throughout their establishment, it's Innovation Center Kosovo and for and Uranik and his team and Schwend and everyone else. And uh, uh, But also I want to thank Miodrag, uh, Miodrag because I at least I know Miodrag. We meet at least once a year during Global Entrepreneurship Week uh, activities uh, throughout Kosovo. I was myself in Mitrovica North as well, so I'm uh, happy about this. I'm, I'm happy to make new new friends. I already connected with Sanya on LinkedIn and uh, hope to connect with you as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, uh, Pop.
probably that's the best way to start this uh, this this way to connect with each other, at least as panelists in LinkedIn and keep the communication going. So we have to be practical and, and active, let's say ourselves as a uh, as a participants of this event. And uh, I thank you for that. Uh, I would like to continue with Mr. Sanya Ivanchis from French Serbian Chamber of Commerce. So we had an American Chamber of Commerce. Now we have a French. Uh, definitely would like to focus on the ecosystem uh, and the work you're doing, but then also maybe follow up on, on uh, have some follow up questions for all of you uh, after Sanya and Marco. Thank you for joining, Sanya. Thank you for the invitation. It was a great initiative. I really believe that the economy is the best way to build bridges between people. Uh, so, as I understand, I'm not only the French voice here, I'm also representing European <laughs> voice. We have heard so much about Trump in America. <laughs> so don't forget France and Germany who are also working very much on Serbian and Kosovo cooperation. Joke, uh, only uh, French uh, Chamber of Commerce in Serbia is uh, an organization that is operating for the past 10 years in Belgrade. Uh, I came to Belgrade when it was created. We are a self-financing organization, so you can also consider us as an SME. We do know how what it takes to, to, to survive when you are an SME and how hard you have to work. So this is very important to us to help SMEs, but also big companies that, that are present in Serbia. We have two different sectors of activity. The first one is all membership activities. We have members from obviously France, practically all French companies that are in Serbia are our members, but also Serbian companies and other international companies. The idea is because everybody wants to work together to create a dynamic community with many economic exchanges. We also have a second sector of activity, which is for the French companies that do not operate in Serbia. So for them, we do different market studies. We find for them clients, uh, suppliers, partners, whatever their need may be. And uh, for the past uh, three to four years, now we are uh, starting operations in other countries of ethics Yugoslavia because uh, as you have all mentioned each of our countries is very small so serbian market is fairly small market and the idea was to offer a bigger market for french companies so we are already operating in bosnia in montenegro and in north macedonia and we're obviously open to to working with all other countries the uh, fact is that french companies are not that interested into into our countries it's not a strategic market for them so what we are trying to do is actually show them how much potential we have here and all the things that we can do together digital is one of our priorities for has been our one of our priorities for the past uh, four to five years because it is also one of the French government's priorities. Uh, France has already a very dynamic startup ecosystem. I don't know, for example, uh, if you knew that five of 12 connected objects that are sold via Apple Store in the US are French. So in Europe and in the world, people don't know really that French companies, French startups are extremely dynamic, dynamic and the idea is to build a digital republic. So. That is why French government is, is hugely investing in startups and also trying to build the cooperation between startups throughout the world. Uh, we can have, uh, you can have some more details about that later on in the conversation, but I'm very open to collaboration and cooperation with, with all of you. And I would be very happy to hear from you, not only now, but also after the event. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sanya, and uh, I think that's great because this is uh, also something we have been discussing and, and, and it's, it's a topic for the future because all of the good initiatives in the region, I think, do not help only a country itself, but really they build a region and ecosystem and they make the region attractive and this is something that sh we should be seeking out. And um, I think it was also recent discussions where we really share the community and we're happy when we see a Macedonian startup, let's say, win a, 
uh, a global or a European award, and then we should be all happy also for each other because that really brings our region into a spotlight and we can attract more definitely more investments and, and, and make the country more region, let's say, more attractive uh, for, for also talent. Um, Mr. Marco Rakis from Innovation Center Mitrovica is also a partner. Uh, happy to have you on board. I think uh, this is a place which um, can can really uh, spark and can really connect. It can be a starting point for connecting our communities. We've had very good discussions with Marco and definitely yet to find it. It can be a great starting point where our communities can meet and really show that uh, progress and success uh, can be the, is is there, but we just need to, to do so. I think if we can put efforts in helping Mitrovica, Mitrovica Innovation Center, I think uh, it can be a good starting point. Uh, Marco, an introduction and a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Ranik. Thank you for the nice word and thank you for having me here today. So I am not that kind of person that I want to uh, to to tell that you make mistakes, but it's really important to say that we are not Mitrovic Innovation Center North. And basically it's not important, but the thing is that we avoid to put this geographically uh, 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 name in our uh, organization. So I am executive director and this is Mitrovic Innovation Center. You see the logo, it's a monument and one of the uh, main point in Mitrovic and also symbolize two hands uh, against one enemy. As you can see, there is two hands which are pushing up, uh, probably, not probably, it's made uh, in honor of miners who fights together against, against Nazis in World War II. And basically, we are inspired by all this story, and I think that all younger generation should know more about it. And that's one of the reasons why we choose this monument, give them some uh, modern design, and basically that's how we start. It start, uh, I think, one of the inspiration most important came from a hackathon organized by uh, Belgrade Forum for Political Excellence three years ago. So we, 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 we have been there and met many people who inspired us and we realized that we need that kind of uh, thing here. Also ICK and uh, IT cluster of Kosovo Stick help us a lot in the past, and we are hoping that this good cooperation and good practices will, will continue. Something that I'm really proud of is that we are not organization that provides services, trainings, um, startups, uh, and many other uh, services only for one population, uh, Serbia. So we have more than 40% people that, which are coming from Italy to South. And basically, something that we are doing here on, let's say, macro level, we are doing here in our city on, some, let, let's say, level of individuals. And it's really glad to see that interested, interest and economy is something that really can breed, uh, build a bridge between people. And also, we have here businesses which are multi-ethnic, led by actually one of them. It's QA agency, led by Albanian Albanian girl and the guys who are working with her together are Serbians. And also, it's really something really amazing, and we are really proud of. So we are young organization, let's say two years old, but our plans are, let's say, we are shooting to stars. So at least we will shut the moon, and. Uh, something that we are preparing for the future are podcasts that we are planning to promote all these guys and I will of course invite some of you uh, to be our guest. Uh, basically one of the most important things is that we realize that beside this training in this unique socio-economic system of Mitrovica and whole North region we are building new values and these values are trust and communication between different communities. So people who never pass the bridge, they're coming oftenly in this year, two times weekly to trainings. So our trainers are people from experts from Pristina. Some of them are today's panelists in second and third panel. Uh, we have uh, trainers also from local companies here in the North and basically we are connecting people on small small scale level. So 
is really important for all of you to understand that we as a Serbian minority here in the north, we need to build a trust also towards Pristina and also towards Belgrade because there is some kind of, let's say, people are, I sometimes feel that people don't trust as much as we deserve. And basically we are proving them wrong and we are really proud of that with our, with our work. And basically we are really happy because all these situation is changing. These ethnic divides followed by tumult through last decade defined perception and priorities for these municipality. And these municipalities here in the north, they are neglect neglecting the needs of young younger people here. And basically we are facing with not with people who don't really understand the needs of younger generation. We are trying hard and Mishko also know that and I'm, I'm sure he will share these kind same stories uh, in second part. So basically stories sounds a bit negative, but we are trying to, to, to change the, the perspective and try to help young generation here in Mitrovica region. Thank you. And if you have some question, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, opening remarks. And it was definitely very nice to hear about you and your work for all of you. Uh, definitely, uh, there was some some uh, let's say comments and, and and things that in opening remarks that that the, they laid the foundation for the let's say the second part of the uh, discussion on the panel. Uh, we talked about trust. We talked about uh, local uh, local issues. Let's say that that bother us as communities. So. Definitely would be interested maybe to give an overview of how you as people, as active people, you see the ecosystem, uh, especially locally, but then also uh, in the region. What do you think are some of the some of the challenges and opportunities that maybe you see uh, in the local ecosystem, both in Kosovo and Serbia? And then maybe on the set, on the third part of the panel, we would like to discuss also on practical ways on how that we can build this regional cooperation because definitely we stated that, and we know that it's important that's why we're all here in these panels today but definitely it's good to give each other's overview about how the local ecosystem is working and then on the third question uh, uh, as a third part we will talk uh, specifically on how we can build practically this regional cooperation so I'll go back to Driton. Driton uh, talked and uh, talked about his extensive, let's say, engagement both in civil society, but mainly as an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. And uh, I believe you you can give a quite good overview of, of a bit also historic, but also a very uh, active uh, overview of uh, Kosovo's startup ecosystem. Uh, thank you, Ramik. So I don't know. I, uh... Uh, I would I would love to point out some of the challenges in order maybe to to uh, to start the conversation and the discussion on how to how to tackle not to overcome for sure because the, those challenges are uh, partially uh, something that we can work on and and some of them are absolutely in the hands of uh, those who we mentioned previously so. Let me start by saying that the, the, the primary issue that we are all facing today uh, is uh, freedom of movement. Uh, and and that, that, that is the crucial issue in, in, in general. Today with pandemic even more uh, uh, emphasized, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and that freedom of movement, be it imposed or be it uh, uh, such as today with, with pandemic is uh, creating uh, lots of issues. At, uh, at the end of the day, we are not born virtual. Uh, we are now uh, getting to know the virtual. We were born uh, working, playing, uh, having fun with uh, each other, talking to each other. Uh, uh, we are much more social than... than uh, we can assume that we can overcome the, that freedom of movement with virtual. And in that sense, for us, especially in Kosovo, uh, uh, it is a huge issue. We are sort of uh, uh, sitting in the middle of Europe, but we are uh, uh, 
again capsized in 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 one one small uh, country and whenever there is an opportunity for any of our business uh, men and women entrepreneurs uh, uh, startups uh, people from civil society to move on and to meet there comes this hurdle of visas of borders of changing plates of uh, I don't know what uh, 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 in that sense, and that, that is creating a, a huge issue for uh, everybody. The second challenge that we we all as a region are facing has to do with education. Uh, and whenever education is mentioned, I, I always tend to look uh, into it from uh, an optimistic point of view, not the pessimistic. Meaning there are uh, bright uh, uh, cases of uh, well uh, designed and well performed and, and uh, uh, either fast track or long term uh, education uh, opportunities. There are very few, but there are. And uh, whenever somebody says, but how do you know that? Well, I know because people are leaving. And that is the third uh, uh, challenge, that, that brain drain those who are well educated be it because of the system that is being provided to them or because of their individual uh, willingness to to learn and, and to uh, get the best uh, out of it unfortunately are not staying uh, in our countries they are living for uh, mostly better social uh, opportunities not so much because of what usually people say yeah, it's because of salaries and uh, I don't know this and that. No, I mean, the salaries in the sectors, uh, especially in the sectors that are uh, thriving, uh, such as ICT, <coughs> sorry, sector. I mean, the salaries in, in uh, Serbia, in Kosovo, in, in uh, Albania, in whichever country you mentioned in the region are pretty high uh, in terms of what you get with that salary and what life you can uh, uh, live in. So that is also one challenge that that needs to be, uh, uh, how to say, discussed regionally because there are so many opportunities to work together in that sense as well. And then building excellence centers and building innovation centers and, and uh, accelerators and incubators and whatever training providers you can name as well. Uh, is something that we, we could work on together and we could share uh, the expertise, share the know-how, uh, share the finances in, in building all this. And when we come to finances, that is one of the, the hardest uh, and the toughest uh, issues to tackle again, uh, access to finance. As I said previously, I'm, I'm uh, one of the co-founders, a partner, managing partner in uh, Recura, which is a financial advisory and uh, a boutique consultancy uh, firm. I tend to say to people, we are a small big five. Uh, so uh, something that is very unique to the region, not uh, many companies offer services that we uh, provide, both to established companies, corporations, uh, large funds and small funds, as well as the uh, startups. And this is what we see every day every day uh, beyond the traditional uh, institutional financing mechanism and instruments everything left is le uh, is uh, uh, to be managed by individuals so angels uh, a bunch of people who get together some corporations who have uh, more cash than they need uh, some wealthy individuals who have made their uh, wealth uh, in other businesses and now want to transfer their uh, uh, expertise and know-how or think that uh, startups are funky and let's do some funky business now because that's cool and uh, I want to get younger today. So all that is left to some sort of a, a chaotic uh, uh, but functional uh, uh, way of doing business. We don't have investment funds in Kosovo. There is no law uh, on that. We don't have any uh, sort of a law that allows alternative financing in this country, unfortunately. And, the, and I don't see much in the region as well. Although Macedonia has something, it's not functional. 
I don't know how the situation is in Serbia. I would love to hear that. Uh, I know that there is something in Montenegro, but again, uh, location is not funky again, to, you know, for that purpose. And what we have been trying to do in the last couple of months or uh, a year and a half uh, is to establish a fund outside of this country, which is then causing issues with taxes, with uh, whether it's uh, in EU and how to manage that and how to, if there's a double taxation, et cetera, et cetera. This lack of access to finance, I think is hindering and is the most problematic issue in uh, developing the local uh, economies. We could be running 200 miles per hour if we had access to finance. We are currently running 40 miles and we are struggling all the time, uh, all of us, uh, to get a minimum of something to make our startups uh, better positioned, uh, better uh, equipped with knowledge, with people, with uh, uh, tools, with whatever, in order to move on and become the big ones. Uh, lack of that is creating opportunities for the others. So we are seeing Czech guys coming to uh, Kosovo, we are seeing uh, UK guys, US guys, and they are getting access to something that has been be building so long, so hard, for the tiny fraction of the real wealth uh, of what that uh, really matters. So I will stop here. I, I hope that uh, I at least gave some, uh, uh, laid some ground for, for further discussion. Definitely. Um, really, can, I, can I jump in? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, let's make it interactive. Yeah. I wanted to ask Driton just a quick note because he listed very, uh, very well uh, the challenges, but definitely maybe just an overview. What do you think are some of the benefits that our ecosystem has? Uh, what, what would be attractive, let's say, for, uh, for not just for our local entrepreneurs, but what do you think Kosovo stands out just as an overview for our, 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 our peers? Not only Kosovo, uh, uh, all of the region uh, uh, stands for something that, uh, first of all, let, let me put it this way. You know, when, when you are born and have been living in an environment which uh, requires you and the society itself to be innovative, you know, you wait in a line for bread and you be innovative and you pass the line or you find a friend and get the bread from somebody else. We, we've been doing this kind of uh, things all our lives. You know, we've been trying to find ways to do things uh, as much as easier as possible, as, uh, as functional as possible with less effort, you know? And being as such as societies, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we are not bound by, uh, as I say, uh, 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 social constraints which, which are put to us. I, I tend to, uh, well, I play basketball three times per week. I used to play before pandem uh, pandemic. Uh, so, and I, I, whenever we would discuss why basketball is so, uh, uh, so not only popular, but why, why the people in the region play basketball well? Because they don't care about the standards. They play as individuals, you know, they do their best. They come up as a team at the end of the day but that's the way that we have been raised and we have been uh, uh, living. Having the youth today, which is now much more open than we used to be before, uh, has access to everything almost, except those four, uh, two or three things that I mentioned, uh, means that they are living their lives in a very, uh, very challenging uh, countries but thinking as the guys who are in a very settled and very, uh, uh, let me put it that way, uh, still water uh, uh, environments, they can uh, live their lives as Norwegians, but being in the region, they are actually acting as a combination of, of, of the uh, two worlds. That is one thing. The second is demography, absolutely. The region uh, still, has a very healthy and uh, very, very uh, vibrant uh, demographic uh, uh, setup. So that is something that is absolutely uncomparable to any of uh, the European or uh, other countries. And at the end of the day, uh, again, 
uh, as I said, uh, uh, that individual, uh, uh, how to say, uh, willingness, drive yeah. to overcome uh, uh, the whole situation is something that that, that is the uh, often opportunity. And when I said they so, go, they go they ahead. Young people, young people, and risk appetite usually goes uh, hand in hand. Reckless sometimes, and I think that's what entrepreneurs need. Costa, please. I'm uh, sorry for interrupting you, but uh, definitely wanted to get the positive of our ecosystems as well, just as a as an overview. Uh, definitely, you were next, and Britain uh, opened up quite some good uh, points. And I know you're working also with the fund, and uh, it's it's probably a good learning experience also to see about. Uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem overview in Serbia in general, so. Sure, and everyone, let, let's make this dynamic. And Driton, thank you for, for I, I will back up you for, on, on the educational part, but since I'm not the expert, I'm not even sure how my kids will be, will be go for school and how this process will look like. Um, um, I, I will just share on the group, uh, uh, which I think it's uh, actually a good question. How do you actually guys measure the, the startup ecosystem? How do you know what, what's actually going on? And uh, 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 what was very useful uh, from our experience is that um, uh, 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 Serbian government supported it. it uh, uh, actually, it's a United States-based uh, agency, which is a world-famous agency for uh, uh, doing surveys on startup ecosystems worldwide. So it's kind of a, I would compare it like a, uh, any kind of economic analysis, which is recognized by, 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 the, by, by the whole of the world. And actually, it goes deep down and kind of put the ecosystem in, in, the, in the right stage. and and. Uh, 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 what is actually now Serbia's position now that it has exited this uh, entry or this beginner stage. In numbers, it means that uh, in 2019, there was uh, over half of the billion of exits. Uh, for the people who are not uh, from the startup ecosystem, it means that over the half of the billions, tech companies were sold on the, on the open, open market. Uh, uh, so, which which was actually uh, good. The huge the huge uh, problem. It's also access to finance. Um, uh, fortunately enough, we we now have the legislation in place and and all all, all the laws. But uh, what I like to to point out that uh, uh, th there is a uh, there is a different challenge in which part of the access to finance. I would say that this uh, uh, this uh, phase of when you're just starting, we call it idea stage or maybe a concept stage. It's pretty much covered. Uh, uh, it's it's covered by uh, it's covered by the innovation fund, uh, which is supported by the World Bank. Uh, in in numbers, it means that uh, roughly 50, 50 to sixty companies in this early stage receives eighty thousand euros of grants uh, uh, in, in Serbia every year. And, and from that from from that tone, uh, private sector or us being a private investor. Besides IC Hub Ventures, there is also South Central Ventures, which is pretty active in Serbia, but also in the region. We come up as this maybe a bit later, later, uh, later, later investor. What we're missing now and what we're seeing are these tickets, which are between uh, 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 maybe 500,000 or, or, or a million, because the next rounds are usually uh, done on the West. So it's maybe a, a kind of a different perspective. Uh, maybe to put, put one thing on the table, and please don't tell anyone, uh, is that uh, what we are actually seeing is that we are we're seeing now teams from uh, 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 from Kosovo, but not only from Kosovo, partnering partnering up with Serbian founders, applying for innovation fund, because I think that's in the blood of entrepreneurs. They will they will cross these borders of of you know like uh, changing things and and just to 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 stress out a couple of things which are uh, uh, also I still have, but also other parts of the startup ecosystem are, are now are now facing that we have reached this point point that we have over 30 uh, startup centers throughout Serbia, co-working spaces. As I said, access to finance in this early stage is covered. Uh, we have uh, good tax reductions for uh, companies investing in R&Ds and so on. We have uh, resolved some payment issues. And uh, But what is actually a big question for, now, for us now is, um, uh, as those guys from Startup Genome told us, they told us, like, so what? So what? You, you've done some things good, but so what? In order to improve that, they, uh, what is uh, experienced from some other countries is that uh, uh, this region or uh, Serbia, or but I think this region has to have some kind of specific. It could be, I'm just giving an example, innovation around agriculture, innovation around artificial intelligence, innovation, about, who know, but 
it's not sufficient that you're ju just you know like doing stuff and having hubs and having some startup it's uh, it, 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 it should, it, the next stage for us at least, it's going to be building these verticals possibly around industries so that uh, we could be recognized not only, not only through uh, 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 two or three unicorns or, or two or three success stories, but as a, as a good uh, uh, talent pool, uh, good uh, solid infrastructure for, for innovation around possibly some traditional economy. Uh, but, uh, not to delay anymore, but uh, for all the colleagues, feel free to, to look at this, this report. And one of the things I, 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 I truly recommend is that this kind of report should be done in, in, uh, in uh, all of the countries throughout the region. It was very useful for us to, to direct us and, and to benchmark us with, with other ecosystems which are less or more developed. Thanks. Thank you so much. Definitely, we, we, we were talking with Startup Genome and uh, they are partners of the Global Entrepreneurship Network. Unfortunately, as it comes out, usually there is an associated fee with that, which uh, is not only access to finance for entrepreneurs, but also for us to support organizations which we couldn't afford. Uh, but definitely, and also... Listen, listen, I can tell you it's expensive. It's expensive, uh, yeah. but it, 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 it paid out. Definitely, definitely. but uh, we need, uh, we, 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 we were looking with partners to cover it, and we definitely, it's in our pipeline. And uh, I agree that we, we need it. You touched on some very important things, uh, on specialization, on the focus, uh, on the so what and next, but the so what needs also scale, right? Because you wanna you wanna scale, and uh, you can only scale so much when you're such a small country and, and a community. So definitely, uh, it's been a topic of discussion in all of our regional initiatives. Uh, you might or you might not know. At least us as ICK, we are founders or co-founders of Startup Europe Western Balkan Network. We partner with ICT Hub Belgrade and EBRD Star Venture Program with GIS at ORF. We're also in some regional initiatives and then also finance in motion. So there are some regional initiatives which is trying to, to particularly bring us to that focus in which we as a region maybe each specialize on something and would be together a one-stop shop for foreign direct investments and, they can, they can, and then we can also complement each other on our, uh, let's say, offering. Uh, but definitely some, some great things happening. Uh, I would like to continue immediately with, uh, with, with, with the startup. I would like to stay a little bit more startup. Maybe, Sonia, you mentioned something about the French and uh, definitely some, some, some of the opportunities and challenges which we talked are evident, but maybe just a, yeah. a thought. What could be, how can we together be attractive for French corporates or French startups to, to maybe come and, 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 and start a business here? By the way, we have a French startup. We have two French guys who came from France and started, they are here in our offices, uh, incubated, and they started a business. They opened an amazing startup uh, uh, in, 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 let's say, in uh, travel. That it's called Breathe in Travel, in which they're trying to bring French-speaking uh, tourists to the Balkans. And so they've created these joint touristic packages, and uh, that's one way of bringing people and getting to know the region. Uh, but how we can scale that and how we can be more attractive, uh, I would love to hear your uh, opinion. Very happy to hear that you have French guys because that qualifies you to ask perhaps this year or the next year to qualify as a French tech hub. Belgrade was labeled as a French tech hub last year. What's French tech? French tech is an accreditation that is awarded to French cities at start that are recognized for their startup ecosystem uh, because French government wanted to invest heavily into, into that ecosystem. And they discovered, obviously, that uh, the initiative could go global. So since uh, 2016, I believe, they are also labeling major innovation centers in the world as French tech hubs. The idea is to bring entrepreneurs together. First, if there are French uh, startups in the country, but also local companies. Uh, the idea is to create a snowball effect. And that is what happened actually in Belgrade. Now they, uh, they qualified last year. There are, I think, 15 members now. 
So I believe that that could be a potential uh, project for you too in, in Kosovo, label Pristina, for example, French Tech Hub. See with those two guys. Uh, I can give you further information, but I also believe that the French embassy in Kosovo can give you uh, the, 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 the dossier and how to file in for that. So that's one possible possible road for you to to develop, because uh, startups can't uh, can't uh, live alone. You know the the networking is very important and collaborating is very important and uh, also that's possible access to funds for you. So that's that's one of the ways that I would suggest. Thank you very much, but uh, definitely, I, I, uh, from our experience with the French guys, you, you see that they, they are surprisingly happy with the, with the offering and with the environment, and obviously this is something not just with uh, Paris, but definitely we can build with Berlin and London in attracting uh, some, uh, some, some of their talents. Uh, and possibly now with two chambers of commerce, with both uh, Ariane and, and, and and uh, Tamara, I would like to talk about what can we do better maybe in the legislative aspect or as an environment to create a better ecosystem so we can attract these startups to, to potentially develop prototype and start businesses here. Tamara, maybe uh, because you work with SMEs, obviously some of the challenges that are there are evident, but what are you doing maybe to improve them, to get a better uh, ecosystem? Uh, okay, I will build on actually what uh, Driton and Costa said. Uh, our role is mainly to build opportunities, to create opportunities for startups, uh, even to meet each other, to meet with larger businesses and to support them in uh, uh, accessing finance. Uh, when saying uh, creating opportunities, I will just give one example because in my department, it's when we say startups, we, we think about all segments of the economy it doesn't matter is it it or any agriculture so startups we are treating them in in the same manner so by giving opportunity for them to even start working uh, we are part of the national program for example for promoting entrepreneurship where the chamber is implementing partners so the government prepared the product financial product for all startups to get loans because that is the segment of the economy which was not able to get sufficient amount of money to start their businesses. So they needed opportunities to start. Innovative companies, what uh, Costa said, they got opportunity through innovation fund, but other segments lack of that larger support in terms of not having small amount of money to uh, start their businesses. So in that regard, we have internal uh, capacities within the chamber to deliver trainings uh, to develop a business plan and to support uh, uh, startups uh, to get loans from the commercial banks, which are partly supported uh, by guarantees uh, from the government side. And there is at the end uh, uh, grants uh, that everyone, everyone who um, pay back the loan gets, and it's uh, in 20%. So in that regard, opportunity for startup is extremely important. And this uh, cooperation like uh, or mix of technical assistance and financial instruments can be good um, for everyone who is interested to get their idea to formalize it. On the other side, because it's not always sufficient support, uh, we are creating opportunities by matching smaller companies, ideas, startups with larger companies. So we also develop some platform uh, to match make small technology, technologically innovative companies with, with the larger uh, companies, corporations, and it's uh, developed for this purpose. It's on ongoing activity. We call it Find a Partner and it's supported by GIZ. So in the first stage, small companies or technologically innovative companies are applying through, through that platform, explaining uh, what are they doing, in which stages they are, did they have any uh, product service already commercialized or not, and then uh, larger companies can 
look through that database and um, search for potential prices, uh, partners so they are not uh, uh, they can cooperate in different manners because the startups and innovative com companies can say uh, for what type of uh, cooperation they are interested in. And also uh, something that uh, Costa said, just to present the activity that the chamber is active in terms of speci specialization. Uh, so the chamber is uh, now implementing, uh, it's just started the project uh, uh, to establish agrotechnology lab. And the uh, idea of the project uh, is to, so actually it's uh, implemented with four countries uh, in consortia with uh, so Serbian Chamber of Commerce, uh, Slovenia, Germany, and Austria. It's a scale up for Europe project. It's uh, financed by EU Horizon 2020. And the idea is to uh, establish four uh, different specialized um, uh, uh, technological labs uh, smart cities, agrotech, agile production, and innovative tech solution in healthcare. Serbia is uh, in charge, let's say, we got the opportunity to build AgTech uh, uh, lab, so to, to support uh, agrotechnology uh, companies to grow, but the idea is to connect among those ecosystems, so to utilize what's existing in the different countries in the same manner so for example when we build that services and products in uh, serbia companies from the region could utilize that any programs uh, or services that are available to support the companies in scaling so uh, i would say that in the, this first month when we start researching ecosystem in that regard it's uh, there is um, uh, scheduled activities and initiatives we detected let's say only in uh, two uh, totally structured organizations with uh, products and service for scaling and cost that is representing one of that uh, organization. And it's important to have maybe synergy like internal than external. So that's why I wanted just to give the example of uh, EU initiatives to do that kind of um, activities like Costa proposed to specialize in cer certain segments and then to have uh, support each other, not building anything from the scratch, but to utilize what we already have to support each other in growing companies, because uh, companies, you know, they will find a way. Uh, we as a business uh, support organization, we are always advocating for better conditions and things are moving, maybe sometimes slower than the businesses would like that, but we are doing that. But if we are creating um, opportunities in these kind of platforms that they can match and exchange the ideas, they will find a way how to cooperate. So I believe that what Riton also said, opportunities, creating opportunities is something what we should all focus on and then on parallel to advocate for better conditions in different segments of work, access to finance or taxation. So those are the things that every company will complain, doesn't matter in which country, what is the uh, industry, so these are the obstacles that everybody has, so, so we are working on that, but the opportunities and the specialization, that is something that I, I believe that should be our uh, focus uh, uh, in upcoming period. Thank you, I agree with it, and I think this is, this is a true term which we have used in all of our meetings. I think co-creation is the best way to get people together because once people create something, they will be very protective of it and uh, mm -hmm. lots of uh, uh, factors. I thank you very much for for, for very detailed uh, <laughs> of, of opportunities. It was very informational also for us to know what are the opportunities that. I would like to go to Marco. Uh, Marco, I will start with you immediately on the third question, which will be also a follow up for all of our panelists. We have about 20 minutes, so I will try to, to, to bring everyone into this. We talked about the importance, we talked about the need of uh, this uh, regional cooperation, and not just need uh, as, as societies, but also uh, driven by economic necessity to grow together uh, for a better future. But how do we do that? How do we do that in practical ways? And can we put some targets? Can I be even more, uh, let's say, 
entrepreneurial or risk taker can we put some targets uh, as this uh, panel uh, to, to to maybe if we meet next year can we continue talking and saying okay we will have one startup from possible registering in serbia or we will have one corporate bringing some of its operations in Kosovo. Can we be can we be more uh, demanding, let's say, in that sense? But can we also dream, but also be very realistic about what can we do practically? So how do we build the regional cooperation? I would like from you to be very creative, very brief. I'm taking notes, and then maybe we can really make it happen. Mark, I'll start with you because you're somehow in the middle of the <laughs> way. Yeah, stuck in the middle. Yeah, okay. It's not, a bad, it's not a bad thing, but the middles are good. Sometimes. Uh, so I cannot more agree with uh, Driton and Costa and everything what they say. And basically, one of the biggest problems that we are facing here in, in middle is brain, brain draining because the whole region here is non appealing environment for the personal growth of young professionals. And uh, that, and basically, that's something what we import even from Prishna or from Belgrade. So basically, our experience here is that interest between people can be driven uh, uh, for our future interest. So basically, I never feel that somebody from Prishna. I saw that Taryanit came in, and I already discussed with him to connect him with guys here in Mitrovica. None of them even reject this kind of initiative to work together on something that can bring uh, uh, economic growth to even region. Because we are discussing about many ideas. The, there is a lot of potential, even on Hackathon, where I discuss uh, with Albanian colleagues uh, on something that we can really do, is that we are really missing that a lot of a lot of uh, uh, opportunities in, for example, agriculture. I saw that Tamara mentioned that. So we realized in that period of time that we don't have even any company that transport freely goods from Kosovo to Serbia to big markets. So we have a lot of organic producers and these kind of products never end in Serbia. There is an import from Albania, but there is no import from Kosovo. Other problem is regulation how you uh, how you in Kosovo law is uh, regulated what organic food mean and basically there is a lot of uh, a potential in that field and also what they feel is that there is a, a lot of potential here in Kosovo there is a lot of people who speak English very well and there is a lot of jobs and they can discuss even in Mitrovica right now younger generation of Serbs Albanian they don't understand each other on their native mother languages so both of them speak English and both of them communicate differently. It's scientifically proven that people, when they speak their non-native language, they are thinking differently. And I think it's more advanced right now. Here, as I say, we have, I think it's only one, uh, Ronik, prove me if I'm wrong, QA agency is start working here. It's made from Serbian and Albanian. So uh, the domain, you can check it, it's hiremy.qa. They even hack the domain and they will start, I hope, really soon to activate themselves and we are helping them to develop. So basically, we can learn and we are learning because you are big scale guys, Costa, Ranik and all others. But something is what we are doing on small scale, which is not so visible, but still there is improvement. You can learn from us. Sometimes small steps are really important. Small step, meaning that these guys who are working together, they will go, they will go for coffee once. Another time lunch, another time they will bring their families and they will be a friend. And from the friendship and trust that we are trying to build, we can have, let's say, initiative that can lead to something really big. And when you discuss about region, I was thinking that whole initiative that should be made in region needs to came only from us, not from the government, not from these political parties or whatever. We need to be, we, I will share later. So we need to, we need to be uh, uh, hold together and offer them solutions. Sometimes I'm really disappointment, disappointed when I try to reach some, let's say, government uh, bodies, even in Belgrade or Krishna, but sometimes I don't 
context to get any answer i get best answer ever so basically we need to try and sometimes we are to try but always that's how we start i cannot even remember how many mispointed meeting i have before we start we you can imagine maybe i'm not a good negotiator maybe i was not good enough in that period of time but now donors and international community who understand uh, potential of Mitrovic innovation center and whole this story they are coming to us and basically we don't have these problems like sustainability and everything else now we are we are we are trying to uh, uh, enhance younger generation and younger to take to take opportunity that we are providing to them so beside these trainings we are organizing different events and i think it's really important and i think that this conference should be inspiration for the future it conference between serbia and costa because there is a individuals that they are going to niche or to the Vršac or to belgrade to attend but i think that we can work all together to uh, have conference after corona crisis and something to do together mitrovica north south even this place here can be a meeting point because this city is is separated let's say on the bridge why don't have big conference on the middle of the bridge that can be something don't share our idea now we have an idea yeah. about <laughs> so basically i i just get it on my I just fall on my mind right now but basically yeah. that can be something and that's 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 the way how we can break prejudice and how we can break these symbol that are forcing us to think about something which we are not basically because conflict between serbs and albanians it's taking like let's say 30 years before that everything was let's say pretty fine and now younger generation they are thinking that everything should be changed but maybe parents they are taking them back and basically if we destroy this symbol of separation we can prove all of them that we can do something together something big and we need something big happen to sparkle thank you marco uh thank you i know there are some great stories and um as we said it starts local and also we as regions are starting local but we want to be very internationally attractive because that's one way we can definitely retain our youth and talent and build a better future for all of us. Um, definitely, I would like to be, again, very specific. What can be one, two, three things that we can do in building regional cooperation? Uh, very practical. Uh, I'll open up to, all, to any of you that are in the panel that have some ideas or some discussion. We have about, um, let's say, 10, 10 to 12 minutes. I see, Dritan, you're... You're ready, and Costa, you're ready right after that, so. Start with Demo Day. Demo Day. Okay. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay, sorry, Costa. It, it, it will be a one-liner for me too. As, as Tamara said, I think that for any, any B2B startup, uh, Kosovo, Serbia, from anywhere, selling to, 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 to specific kind of traditional company it will be valuable not to, 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 to reach out only to Serbian companies, but also to throughout the region. So the businesses will sell. It doesn't matter where they're registered. So the, the next time it will be great if we have this, this kind of overview of the, the, the broader scene. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the next panels also have this. I mean, they are entrepreneurs and they will be talking about educational uh, also opportunities. So we have thought about how to, to also connect them. And definitely, I believe startups uh, at their early stages of development are much more flexible in cooperation than some of the well-established companies or even corporates uh, who represent sometimes also mixed interest. What we're trying to do at Innovation Center Kosovo is really changing the overall mindset and concept about the entrepreneur because what post-war Kosovo produced was really business people and we're trying to build entrepreneurs and there is a big difference between what business people really offer to communities businessmen as a concept in the Balkan, balkans with new entrepreneurs who really bring value who care about society they are socially responsible they care about their employees but the, among other things they really bring products and services 
that tackle some of our uh, uh, pressing issues as a, as a society. So I think this is something that, that should be equally important in, in building the future. Um, we have some more extra minutes. I would like to hear maybe some more ideas on how we can pr practically build a regional cooperation and what maybe we can do between now and the next uh, meeting which we have. I definitely encourage you all to connect on LinkedIn and, and uh, with each other and also share information and be active, but uh, that's one way of keeping in touch. But maybe if you have some very specific projects, um, either we can talk about them now, while we have some more minutes, like five or six, or uh, share them privately. We run out of ideas. I think we, we will wait for this Washington conference to see what kind of money they're bringing. And then we might jump into some opportunities. Dritan, I see your mic is also. Yeah, I mean, there are so many things that we can do, but uh, let me go back a, a step. Uh, whenever we have a project with an international partner uh, in our uh, ICT uh, company in Cactus and Astrid will be talking most probably uh, later on, on that issue as well. We invited them for a beer. Uh, we just tell them, come for a weekend. We'll pay the, the cost of your transportation, your flight ticket. Thankfully, Vizier is here and EasyJet, so it doesn't cost much. But uh, come for a beer. Come and see uh, for yourself, you know, uh, get... Uh, uh, you know, people are hooked to BBC and CNN and, and all uh, B92 and Gazeta Express and Koha and whatever. Uh, just uh, switch off, uh, hop on uh, a bus, a plane, and come for a beer. Come for a weekend. And this is something that uh, you as uh, institutions... Uh, uh, ICT, uh, ICT Hub, uh, ICK, and all the others can do. Uh, luckily, we have donors. They can pay for a bus. We will pay for a beer. Uh, and uh, let's uh, get together once per month, uh, each time a different host. Uh, uh, when we sit together and when we meet, hopefully soon, after all this pandemic and the rest, uh, we will come up with lots of ideas how to make things uh, uh, work. Uh, that, that is something for sure uh, that we can do. Thank you very much. I think we all love that beer idea. So we'll leave it with that. Come on, come on, we have something, yes. Yes, I just wanted to say that uh, even before we can meet all for a beer, maybe we can uh, look the way how to utilize the platform that we have, uh, like find partner. Uh, it is for local use at this moment, but we can all uh, think how to improve it to with languages and everything what might be an obstacle and to start uh, communication before the circumstances are changed and we can all uh, meet in person again. So if you are open for that, we will gladly share with everybody so we can think how to, to use the best of it at this point. Thank you very much. Uh, we will also, uh, as a, one of the coordinators, we will also, if you allow us, share the, the contact details with each other, create a uh, list. And then if you see reasonable, we can also meet, uh, uh, let's say, online for some time and we can decide on how to move forward. I definitely echo the idea which Dritan mentioned. If there are startups that would like to come and stay with us in Pristina, we would be very happy to host them. They don't need to pay for offices for a month or two or three, uh, while they have some ideas in maybe finding some talent or uh, looking into just changing the environment. You know, sometimes you just need a different office view and uh, get some experience. I think one of our, uh, we talked about challenges, but one thing we didn't talk about is our uh, non-diverse uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. I think Pristina is mainly uh, Albanians, uh, male-dominated uh, ecosystem. 
with experts, finally we're getting some young uh, ICT experts uh, from different, but it's not definitely, it's not London or, uh, or uh, San Francisco. So as, as much more diverse we get, I think uh, our products and services will evolve for better and we'll get a better chance of, of working. So the regional cooperation, I think is important also from this uh, diverse uh, perspective, which is, I think, very important for, for growth and, and, and sustainable businesses. Uh, if there is no other closing remarks, or if there is, I would like, if there is anything else, I would like to thank you all uh, very uh, greatly for your participation. And it was very nice to hear and meet all of you. I, I really, truly hope uh, that we can build uh, upon this and uh, look forward to staying you, with you in touch. Uh, we will close this first panel and uh, we will be back at 12 with second panel in which we will have uh, entrepreneurs, people who are running their businesses, who will have created some success stories and are actively working, who will be talking about the struggles and possibly also the needs and hopefully maybe even from this uh, very hands-on uh, discussion, something specific can come up as a, as a collaboration. Uh, I thank you and we'll we will be back at 12 with the second panel. Thank you all very much.
Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the second panel. Uh, I just attended the first panel. It was great insights by all of the panelists. I'm really happy that we had the opportunity to work with Mishko, George, uh, uh, Marco, and the other organizers on bringing the first edition of this forum. Hopefully, the next one will be held on site in Pristina or Belgrade or Mitrovica or Novi Sad or somewhere else in both countries uh, after this pandemic is over. Uh, so, um, without not losing time, I would like to introduce, as you know, and also for the audience, the second panel we will, we will be talking about the uh, entrepreneurial challenges and opportunities uh, in both Kosovo and Serbia, and also uh, we'll try to tackle the regional cooperation and uh, the, the, the challenges that uh, entrepreneurs are facing in, in both countries. Uh, with us, the panelists, I'm going to introduce them. Or Mr. Mugim Sahani of Girofa, uh, Mr. Anifas Liu of Kutia, Mr. Dutan Jopšić of Kerber Games, uh, Mr. Nikola Cvetković of Emito, uh, Ms. Jenita Sopioni of Deinde, and Mishko Miodrag, our friend, uh, will be probably joining and talking more or less about how, how the situation in the north and also in some other uh, Serbian majority uh, uh, um, municipalities in Kosovo is. Uh, the first, I wanted to, to start probably with an introduction. Uh, myself, I know uh, some of the entrepreneurs coming from Kosovo. Morgan is part of our family, one of the most successful entrepreneurs uh, Kosovo has. Uh, and probably I would like to start with you, uh, Mr. Zahoni, just a short introduction for the others. Who are you? What is Birofa? And what do you do? And then we'll continue with. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dusan Jovšić of Kerber Games, and after the Dusan finishes, then I will call for the other uh, speakers. The mic is yours, Mergen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fan. Uh, good afternoon or good day, everyone. Very nice to meet all of you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you for the kind words, Fan. Uh, I think we have great entrepreneurs in Kosovo. Um, uh, I hope to be one of them, but we have a lot of great people in here too. Um, so my name is Merkim and I'm the founder and CEO of Jirafa. Jirafa is an internet services company and our goal is to digitalize and facilitate the internet economy in the region. Uh, primarily we are focused in the center Balkans, but uh, with some of our products we are moving even beyond uh, Balkans, South, uh, East Europe and even going to Western Europe and the global products. Uh, we today currently lead e-commerce um, as well as online marketing through our platform in advertising, as well as we have a video platform with a video production house and certain services such as search, vertical search, classified bus schedule and so forth. In a way, what we are trying to do is we are trying to do the work that big global companies have ignored the region, and that is e-commerce, uh, Amazon has limited presence, uh, locally curated video entertainment shows such as Hulu in the United States or Netflix, but also some of the most basic services that are needed primarily for this, uh, for this region. We are primarily dominant in Kosovo, uh, next we have Albania, but also we serve a lot of 
Albanian speaking diaspora in Germany, Switzerland, and the US. Um, thanks, Sven. I think you're mute. Thank you, Morgan. We'll continue with Mr. Dusan. Can can everybody hear me? Cool. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Dusan, and I'm a, um, a lead of Kerber Games team. We are board board gaming design company, uh, operating from Belgrade, um, and we are quite young team. We are together for just more than two years now. And um, what 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 are we doing is basically. Um, trying to make, or someone would say, we managed to make a different board games for, for 2020. And um, we are trying to capitalize on this new trend of, of um, board gaming becoming uh, more of a mainstream kind of entertainment in the, in the world, especially in the Western world. And uh, we are trying to sell um, creativity from Balkans directly to western markets uh with with games with games we produce i have two more two more uh co-founders of, of of this studio and right now we are working on our uh first game called final challenge it's going to be on kickstarter very soon um and we'll, we are also making two more offshoots one for for companies that is going, going to be used as a um Team building tool and also one for for HR companies specifically that's going to be used as an assessment tool. So yeah, that's that's basically about me and about the, the team and what we do. Thank you, Mr. Jovcic. We have Miss uh, Janita Sopione, the only lady uh, part of this panel. So I should have invited you first, but sorry for this. Janita, <laughs> yours. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's such a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, even though as the only lady, I would like to have uh, more females in this panel, however. Um, I'm from Day Day. So uh, as Day Day, we are a digital marketing uh, agency in Kosovo. Um, the idea of how Day Day came to life, because uh, I think I'm one of the youngest here. So uh, my company, our company, in fact, is uh, one year young. So the idea of how we came to create Day in Day is um, through my two other partners, Chandra, um, I'm sorry, Chandresa and Yen Trem. Uh, the, um, the whole message or the whole value behind uh, this company stands on the fact that we want to digitalize processes, various processes in uh, the entrepreneurship arena in Kosovo through marketing means, given that it's um, digital marketing uh, agency the idea is to be able to uh, digitalize as many processes in this field and provide uh, uh, facilitate these processes through these marketing means uh, given that as uh, as youngsters in uh, in Kosovo we have we have so much potential uh, in this aspect and that's why uh, the uh, services that we, we offer are so have so much value that they need to uh, to be exported somehow or either to uh, to be provided in the, in an international arena. That's why uh, we have initially come up with this idea that should uh, that uh, is to later be uh, even advanced to be more advanced and uh, also to be uh, to be providing more uh, products that are that will help in the innovation and uh, entrepreneurship field. Um, as a result, we have come up with a product uh, through the Innovation Center uh, Kosovo's help. And this, uh, the product is the Oda Creative. So this was kind of the first step of day in day towards, uh, uh, towards providing digitalized products that will help, will help facilitate and digitalize uh, also the processes through this product. The idea behind this product is to uh, is uh, the freelancing platform to provide a freelancing platform in Kosovo that will help uh, youngsters in the field of graphic design to be able to offer their services uh, online without uh, needing uh, the physical presence or without having uh, to go through many 
difficult processes uh, that we have now given the um, economic, economic, social, and uh, political aspects. Uh, without further ado, uh, this was like a short, a brief uh, introduction, and I believe we can continue further uh, with with our discussion. Thank you, Jenita, and now we will continue with Mr. Tsvetkovic of Emito. Hi, everyone. So my name is Nikola. Uh, I am the founder of Emito. Um, Emito is basically a business-to-business -business platform that lets um, businesses run. Uh, marketing campaigns inside the messaging apps. So basically a business, let's say a marketing agency, uh, an e-commerce shop, uh, online publisher, they can use our platform to send a mass campaign via SMS, uh, Facebook Messenger, Viber, browser push notifications, all from a single unified uh, interface. Basically no code um, integration needed. They can just kind of click and grab and in a few minutes uh, get their campaign pains up and running and get more returns uh, on, on their, their sales and marketing campaigns. Um, I'm uh, based in Belgrade and in Niche, uh, originally from Niche, so the, the company has um, uh, people in Belgrade and in Niche. I also run another business which is kind of digital product development company called Product Hype and an NGO um, in Niche called No Limit Hub which is basically a, a small co-working and an organization that kind of organizes and facilitates um, a bunch of um, IT and entrepreneurship uh, events, both physically and in law, uh, online. We host one of the biggest developers conference um, in in, uh, in south of Serbia. And being the fact that this region is where, where I definitely see its potential is the, the, the IT services, like most of the panelists here, uh, that's definitely an interesting topic to, to touch on and like see how we can uh, do more business together. Thank you, Mr. Svetkovic. Uh, it's another fan of ours, Ariane Fazvi of Kutia, who is also part of this panel. Uh, really successful one. One hint that what I've seen him doing during the pandemic and also the quarantine is he never stopped. And we also talked a lot. Uh, Ariane, mic is yours. Please introduce yourself and uh, what, what Kutia does. Thank you, Svan. Uh, it's really an honor to be your friend and Itzika's friend. Uh, also, for the other panelists, we lately launched uh, a guidebook uh, together with uh, uh, ICK, so you can uh, download it and uh, get more information about doing business in Kosovo and finding your tech partner in here. I'm Aaron Fazliu. I'm co-founder and CEO at Kutia. Kutia is a software company based in Pristina. We are currently uh, 28 uh, employees in-house, but we also have friends and freelancers with whom we work in different projects. Uh, our main services are web development, web applications, and mobile applications. We also do uh, UI and UX. Uh, our clients, in fact, Kuti is a, a company that is that is more oriented more in doing business with the partners. Like we aim to find uh, more partners in uh, developed countries, like mainly in Scandinavian region. So we have few partners in Sweden and Norway for whom we offer our services. So they do uh, some part of the business. We do the uh, design and coding here. Uh, I am also co-founder of Beetroot Academy Kosovo. It's a um, training school uh, franchise from Sweden. So we are uh, we plan also to let's say uh, invest in our, in community by uh, uh, bringing this uh, franchise in Pristina. Uh, I try to be very engaged with uh, 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 startups and uh, learn from them, and also to give my input. So I am also part of a few startups in here, uh, lead by my friends. But uh, we are also aiming to do some products in, in the near future at Kutia. Uh, our clients are mostly based in, uh, in uh, uh, Sweden and Norway. So these are top uh, uh, countries we work uh, with. And uh, uh, I'm very uh, honored uh, to be uh, part of this panel as well. And I think that the uh, topic is uh, pretty interesting because uh, I believe that every entrepreneur has its own view of doing business. And uh, even though in, uh, in, uh, uh, during the pandemic, as Spahn mentioned, I tried uh, to be a positive and uh, uh, let's say to, uh, to reflect this positivity also to my team members and let them know that this is a situation that we will uh, go through together. And uh, But I did this by bringing new clients and new 
uh, uh, partners at Petia. So thank you for the invitation, Spand, and it's again. Yeah, thank you, Arianet. Uh, now, Mishko, I think you are the only one who knows most of the panelists from both countries. Uh, but probably, uh, again, a short introduction because you did an introduction in the first panel, but just a quick one for the panelists uh, here. Absolutely. Now it's the the afternoon already, of course. So I, I wish you and to greet you actually once again by saying the good afternoon to all, uh, not only to to the one actually being part of this panel, but also to those you know who are following up live on the Facebook. Uh, so basically, I'm not really fitting that much, you know, within the scope of your portfolios, you know. But I, as one of the partners uh, and the, somebody who represents the organizations, who did quite a lot actually. Uh, especially when it comes to the note um, of possible businesses. Basically, I think uh, I would be able to share some of the previous experience, but also to brief others about uh, the challenges and possibly about the opportunities, of course, uh, which might, uh, uh, which are actually ahead of us. Uh, my name is Mirza Gnicevic, and uh, I do represent the NGO Active, of course, which is a community-based organization established back then in 2010, officially. Um, and uh, with uh, slowly uh, growing actually potential throughout the, the past uh, 10 years, basically, or a decade. Um, nowadays, Active is, uh, has its uh, permanent office in North Mitrovica, but also its uh, civil is an office in Pristina with some of the great regional plans, basically, or plans for the region. But uh, I'm going to keep them, you know, uh, by the time we get uh, officially, of course, approved uh, some of our uh, strategic development uh, plans, basically, for the years ahead of us. <laughs> Uh, we do. We are a hybrid organization, a community-based organization, as I said, with uh, the main aim uh, of uh, uh, the main goal of uh, engagement, uh, meaningful engagement of the Kosovo sub and other non-majority community uh, groups, of course, within the Kosovo social and political life. Uh, of course, we did in the past. We did quite a lot uh, uh, investment uh, to the business sector by giving a great push, basically, to some of the startups and uh, small and medium and medium enterprises in the note. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it, of course, a bit later, uh, since we actually, through our subgranting scheme, actually have heavily contributed to the to the. I cannot say really to the great development of the of the of the business potential in the north, but to some extent we have contributed to the overall understand of the Kosovo single market Kosovo concept, which many of them were lacking. Why was that? Basically, because we, as a, as I made a, a short remark actually with, during the introduction, uh, we are all burdened actually with the politics, with um, unfortunately uh, everyday politics, of course, which many of us are trying somehow to to avoid but unfortunately without a great success. And no need really to elaborate further why is that and why was that. But in the meantime, I have to admit that uh, the major, um, let's say, um, the major um, uh, happening actually and the major, um, major issue when the no actually got open was exactly when the Brussels agreement was signed. So many of us, in the meantime, heavily criticized the Brussels Agreement, but I would have say basically that nowadays we can speak also about some of the positive elements, because without it, I strongly believe that many of us we wouldn't be able actually today and in the future, in the past, actually to meet in person or to start or initiate uh, a great collaboration, etc. Nowadays, uh, we unfortunately cannot, cannot really speak about the great uh, development of the business sector and the entrepreneurs, not only in the north, but also uh, within the Kosovo Serb community. However, there is a great potential and there are individuals, you heard Marco actually in the first panel saying that they started from scratch some years ago and they are really honestly keen to learn more and to become a really a prominent, uh, a prominent not only uh, individuals, but a group of people actually that gather over the one idea to develop the Kosovo, Serb and other non-majority communities, of course, potential within one umbrella and to, of course, um, try to contribute to the overall understanding and uh, and potential of the market and marketing of market opportunities, of course, for, for the non-majority communities. Um, of course, I'll stop here. I'm not going to go uh, uh, now at this point of time in the very early stage about the uh, challenges, of course. And uh, but I honestly, sincerely mean that we need really to speak about the challenges because there are not really one-time challenges or they're just 
or they are just appeared recently. These are the challenges basically that are present within our communities, of course, for two decades, for the, for the last two decades. And unfortunately, what I hate to say, but I need to emphasize this, we haven't got enough recognition and the support by the key policy makers in order to uh, uh, show the abilities to recognize those issues, to put them, of course, on the agenda, and to try at least to uh, 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 um, uh, resolve some of those, you know, who are crucial, not only for sales, but for Albanians and other communities that are living in Kosovo equally. So this is something which is ahead of us, of course, and let's try uh, to open up the discussion and see uh, how we can really at least, you know, address some of those challenges that could really find out their way exactly to the key policy makers in order basically to, to bring more uh, understandings uh, and um, to contribute something that is probably going to come out a bit later this afternoon, as Marco and Duranik uh, were saying about the current meeting basically in yeah. Washington. By that time, of course, I'll come back to you again a bit later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mishko. Uh, let's now start with the discussion. I will continue with Mr. Tahani. Uh, Mirkem, uh, what's, what's the life of an entrepreneur in Kosovo? What's life being an entrepreneur in Kosovo? Uh, thanks, Sven. I think it's just like every other entrepreneur in every other country, everything founders, when they start something, they will have challenges. Um, and if they don't, they are not sold in anything. They are not creating any value. By definition, there will be challenges. However, I tend to lean towards challenges that are more, some of them, one group of challenges that are globally present, like access to talent. It's a challenge everywhere else, so it is a challenge here too, and the light. And then group two, it's more specific to the region, which I think is more relevant to this discussion what the challenges are specific for this region. So in terms of specifically for the region challenges, um, I would by far place access to capital as one of the prominent ones. Um, it is because we don't have anything regionally credible enough or big enough or serious enough that would look at the region. We might have one or two, but not in the capacity needed to develop something new, especially in the tech sector, um, that will look at the region. And global investors, especially those reputable ones, do have certain prejudice idea about the Balkans overall. In fact, some of them have about the whole Eastern Europe. It's not just specific to, 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 to Balkans, I think, is the whole Eastern Europe is viewed. Like if you go to, to the valley, Silicon Valley, typically it doesn't matter if, where you are in Eastern Europe, it's just Eastern Europe. So those prejudices have to be broken because we have seen unicorns have come out from Eastern Europe. The most recent one is UICA from Romania, which has broken borders everywhere. And before that, you have Estonia and other locations in, in that part of the world that typically it's ignored. So I think access to capital is by far the most difficult one. I know some arguments against it are they might not be valuable deals or ideas to be funded. I tend to disagree with it. Um, so that's the first one. Um, others, other challenges that are different specific to the region have to do with things such as uh, infrastructure either, whether that infrastructure will be in the payment system or logistics or uh, access in terms of moving of goods. It's, it's very linked to this, to this area. I remember reading an article a while ago in Serbia, there was a problem with the taxi company, I believe. I could be wrong, but they had a problem with the payment system and it was a pretty big deal. Uh, if you are a startup in Western Europe or US, I mean, integrating anything of that sort is easy. I think this region, it's keeping up the pace, but it's 2020 and we are still discussing the credit card piece and the integration hustles and challenges in it. And it's 2020. So I think the challenges that we have, even though they are being resolved, I think it's just a bit too late. If you look at, uh, you know, it's like the tail of, of things being improved. Uh, so the second group specific to the region, the first was access to capital. The second is infrastructure items that are needed for, for this to develop. And the third one, I think, uh, access to talent, even though it's global, this region has it more prominent uh, because you know, the region is small. It's very hard to compete globally where the pool of, of choices is very limited. So I think access to capital, uh, to, to talent, it's that. 
in terms of legislation or legal parts of it, um, I think we have just agreed that that's a challenge that it's very difficult to solve. Like in our case, we are a U.S. incorporated company. We have raised 10 million U.S. dollars so far in two series with prominent VCs, international, as well as U.S. super angels. And uh, we could not have done any lightly, I'm assuming, but in a cer certain probability, high probability, we, I don't think we could have gotten that investment if we were just incorporated in any of the states in any of the countries in, in this part of the world. So, but that I think we have accepted. A lot of companies now, when they go for funding, they either register, incorporate in America, England, or some other European country so that they have it easier. Uh, but at the same time, I think this region can produce a lot of ideas and unicorns. And I think that's what our disadvantage of the region is. You have some very bright people, passionate and disciplined with a lot of grit who can do this. Um, and I think the focus has to be here, but at the end of the day is the hard truth that these challenges, nobody will come and solve it for us. I think we have to solve it ourselves, whether it's funding, whether we have to break borders. If a typical investor speaks to 100 investors and one of them says yes, a typical investor from this region might have to speak to 500 to 1,000 investors for one of them to say yes. Uh, but it's just the hard truth. Now, having said all of these challenges, I think opportunities are faster. Because of these challenges, you have so many other opportunities. Uh, we have grown on the last four years on over 1,500%. Our compound annual growth rate is triple digit. Uh, makes us one of the fastest growing startups, not just Balkan, but also Europe. And uh, that opportunity existed because of those challenges. If you didn't have those challenges that I just mentioned, you would have had so much more competition, which I think is good. It will provide better value to the customers. But because of these challenges, creating products for the long, local regional market, it's easier versus opening e-commerce, say, in UK, England, or US, uh, or Germany, any of the developed markets. And then other challenges, the opportunity, the last one that I mentioned it, the first one was that it's less challenging to create something here. The second is the cost to produce a global product is much lower. In, let's say, in California, in Silicon Valley, you would need two, three 300,000 to pay one developer a year. But two, 300,000 in this region, you can create a couple of two, three very good beta products that have global potential. It doesn't mean that that would work right away, but I think you can do that, that you cannot do in other regions. So overall, looking at the challenges of community, it depends on the perspective of the person viewing at those. Um, and if we view, because of those challenges, we have new opportunities, I think that's what makes sense, and this gives us room. So for any entrepreneurs, my personal opinion, I don't think it should be excused for what we are in the region, given even the challenges because there are opportunities that rarely exist anywhere else. And I think that's, uh, that's a good thing for as long as we take it seriously and we push forward. Thank you, Morgan. Really, really uh, great some, some insights from, from your side. I will continue with uh, Nikola, Mr. Svetkovic, just a short overview of a life of an entrepreneur in Serbia. How is, how is life there? Uh, is it hard to be an entrepreneur there or not? Yeah, well, as the previous speaker mentioned, it, it, everywhere, no matter where you are in the world, if you're an entrepreneur, you're having a hard time. Uh, so it is hard. It is constant hassle. It is constantly trying to kind of juggle between the priorities and um, funding and like getting the right team and getting everything to move as fast as it should move. Uh, and of course, there's like a bunch of challenges that you need to solve along the way, which kind of are not making things uh, easier. Um, I do agree that uh, with, with some of the points which were mentioned before with with like which are kind of making it a little bit harder to do it from here, uh, like the payment integrations and stuff. That's like the basic stuff that kind of we have to jump through the hoops and kind of figure out how to actually make the legal and admin stuff work and actually lose months on it in order to actually get anything tested uh, in the real real environment. I mean, uh, in the end, we also decided to also incorporate in UK uh, for the sake of just uh, better investment climate and just being able to integrate with the biggest payment providers, 
which is right now not that possible, for example, to integrate with Stripe um, in Serbia, which I believe should be the, the, the key priority of, um, of our administration. Um, and uh, besides from that, I think that uh, working in this sector is fun. I think that people are really inspiring that we kind of uh, work on a day to day basis and like the problems that most of us are solving um, are, are exciting. So I think that's that that's a good good thing for us. What we're lacking is the, the business savviness and the business experience uh, for some advanced uh, topics needed to make a product work. So there's a bunch of companies doing service business, which is which is good to 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 kind of provide food on the table. But if we really want to go big. We have to build more products and build the, the product ecosystem and the product knowledge, uh, which is currently lacking, especially some, some adva advanced topics uh, like um, optimization of, let's say, onboarding processes or uh, analytics of the products. There's like so many teams which can kind of build, for example, a product for you, but they have no clue about the analytics that you should be tracking on the back end to actually be able to make wiser, more wise decisions uh, in the future. That's, that's from the technical perspective. On the business side, I think that uh, our colleges, like the economics and management, are just um, a little bit outdated and the knowledge that, that um, these people get, like they come into jobs basically as a blank slate with, without real skills that, that could be useful. And then they kind of have to get educated. And still, we're still early in the ecosystem um, development phase to have more experienced people who have gone through it once or twice or three times with different companies to be able to then use that knowledge and kind of make everything move way faster. Um, but on the other note, um, of, of course, that it's cheaper to 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 kind of start something from here. The, the operational costs are, are lower. Um, finding the the, the talent um, it is not as easy as we all like to believe it is. Like if you needed 50 developers, you got whatever 10 million tomorrow from a really good investor. It will be wouldn't be that easy to find 50 people, which in US would probably be a different thing or UK or whatever. Uh, so um, I think that we are a little bit lying to ourselves that we have like a great talent pool where we still have a lot to learn and to work on. But in general, I think it's it's the overall uh, climate and the opportunities that we all have uh, are there. Uh, they're within our grasp. Uh, we can start companies from here in whichever countries. It would be better if we did it in our own without having to incorporate in either US or, or UK due to just legal admin work. Like, let's say investment is a different thing, but just being able to operate uh, shouldn't be uh, kind of uh, a burden when starting a company. So um, I think there's a, a lot of potential and we, uh, as mentioned before, each country is a really small market here and like um, most of the products uh, that are coming up from this region are targeting the global market because they are aware that if they try to build whatever um, a platform that does a one single thing for one market local here it probably won't be that big of a business it will require more or less similar amount of effort to build the product but to actually make it happen into a business um, the, the chances, chances are way lower. So uh, I think these are some, some, some key points. I don't want to go around too much. Uh, there's a lot of other people who can share a lot of interesting things as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicola. Before we continue with the third uh, speaker, I just wanted to show you because I put my laptop on a 3D printer, which is called Formon. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any other opportunities. So I just wanted to show you this one. Uh, it's called Formon Core. Uh, it's the first 3D printer that is made in Kosovo. Uh, it comes along with uh, the software parts, and now they are working on the, I think, the Formon 2.0, which will be uh, larger. And it uses biodegradable uh, filament. And they are now on the process of uh, uh, assembling it. And uh, they have the capacity, they sit in our basement. And they have the capacity of uh, assembling or producing 10,000 units per year. So I just wanted to show another part because there are also some few hardware companies existing in Kosovo. Uh, it's pretty hard for them because if you are a software company and you fail, then it doesn't cost really much. But if you fail with a hardware company, uh, this is what we have learned from, from the guys. It's, it's, it's pretty hard. So that's why they, they, they are working every, every day on, on on up, up, updating the, the companies and looking for C marks for, for different patents 
in order to penetrate to the to the to the, to the global market. And it's really hard if you are an entrepreneur from Kosovo, and especially when you produce something like uh, as a three D printers. Um, Janeta, uh, I know that you are in an early stage with Dainda. And uh, how did you start? Because what I wanted to, to do with the, this, this session is that what we have seen uh, myself personally uh, in Pristina is that I see a lot of youngsters trying to finish the university and go and work for the public sector. And we are in a really 24-7 uh, uh, mission on promoting entrepreneurship as their future career. I see a lot of them just want to go and work for the ministry. They go sit there and work, they work for a lifetime. They get payments. You know, we have a lot of young entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs uh, making some jokes during the pandemic saying, good, you are in public sector, you are getting your salaries while well, we are working for you in taxes. So, Janeta, why, 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 why you entered the entrepreneurship and why, why did you choose uh, the startup life? Um, Spen, I'm the perfect example of what you just explained. Um, I'm a recent graduate. Uh, I graduated last year. So, um, but being such a young female, let's say, and coming from a family that uh, has, let's say, the mentality that uh, sees such, let's say, public sector as the idea workplace for uh, someone, let's say, like me or like any other uh, youngster is sometimes very daunting and it's sometimes discouraging. However, um, I also come from a family uh, that has been in the entrepreneurship arena for such a long time. And uh, let's say that business making kind of is, is just what I grew up with. Um, the idea of why I decided to join, um, let's say, the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Kosovo is because um, having seen how, uh, let's say, initially uh, my father's uh, journey throughout uh, from the tough time to how he has built his own, uh, let's say, life through his company uh, is just what, what I wanted to, to also do. However, uh, given the situation and especially, especially the gender discrepancies that we have here in Kosovo, uh, makes me uh, feel motivated even more to to work very very hard and try to to thrive in a in a system where uh, uh, patriarchy has has uh, has put place in. So uh, given this is like serves as a main motivation. Also, uh, I would like to relate it with uh, while I was graduating, uh, we had to create to to do. Uh, our honors publication, which uh, I decided that it was going to be about analyzing the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Kosovo, which uh, I did, and it actually relates very, very much to, to the topic. It was about the challenges and opportunities uh, in, uh, in the entrepreneurship, especially in startup innovation uh, in Kosovo. So um, I will share what I actually tried to uh, to put in that honors publication as uh, what that document is about still reflects what I think uh, what I think today as well. So uh, in relation to the opportunities and challenges, uh, I highly agree with what was said, and especially uh, when uh, Mergin said that. Uh, challenges actually lead to opportunities. And one thing which I totally don't, don't agree in our society is that we have such, um, uh, like 50% of the population is, almost 50% of the population is under 30, which means that we have so much potential uh, to provide so much and overcome such challenges. However, what I've witnessed is that um, these youngsters are actually, most of them, very discouraged given that they have not, uh, they are not being provided the opportunities, let's say, from various actors, uh, be that institutions, uh, the government, or anything uh, else. So what I, what I tried to do through this uh, document, through my honor publication, is that to provide a kind of map that effectively connects these challenges with the opportunities. And instead of seeing them as challenges, we see them as actual opportunities to create something new. Uh, we know that we have uh, critical issues in Kosovo related to various aspects, uh, the political, economic, social aspect, you name it. 
and uh, there is so much so much space to innovate on and to create something new at that uh, it means that there is uh, Kosovo can be seen as the land of opportunity is actually so rather than be discouraged discouraged by the, the challenges that let's say we see them as such. Uh, as a result, if we are able, I think that if we are able as youngsters to connect these, to, to identify, effectively identify these critical issues in these whole sectors and provide our innovative ideas on, on such sectors, I think that we can turn these issues, uh, Kosovo issues, into actual opportunities in which we can thrive. In this way, we are able to create, I would say, this circular um, the circular circular uh, system that will, would work together in itself and would generate uh, uh, benefits for both parts. In this regard, it would be like a symbiotic relationship, a relationship between uh, the one who is actually able to give a new idea, provide a new idea, and develop on that idea. And actually, in the in the same time, you're also overcoming, uh, let's say, a social and economic or political. Uh, issue in, in Kosovo. I think that this kind of circular system would work really well and uh, given the opportunity as youngsters we would really uh, do, do good at it. However, one more thing is that um, given that let's say we all know that uh, in any, any place financial stability, uh, other resources are scarce that is why we have to, uh, no matter what, find new ways because uh, it's not that in only in Kosovo we have lack of uh, uh, financial resources, but also in, in any place you, you struggle with that one. And when it comes to comparing ourselves with, let's say, um, uh, Silicon Valley, I think that that is a very, very, very big step, uh, given that... Uh, for one country to work to work and be able to develop and grow, I think that the main point is to be able to uh, watch your circumstances, your situation, and adapt on those circumstances and situations. So, uh, if we are to uh, look at other examples, as let's say uh, Silicon Valley or any other example that is pretty successful and pretty big, then copying that kind of success or let's say that kind of technology, I don't think that it will, will work in our country, in our developing country, because we have to adapt the technology or the ideas or the innovation right for what the situation is in Kosovo. That is what I mentioned, that, that we have to look effectively at critical issues and address them through our innovation and our ideas. <laughs> Thank you, Janita. We are really proud of you and your team, and uh, we are really glad you are part of our community here at the Business Incubator. Uh, Dushan, I just went through your uh, LinkedIn uh, profile, and I see that you have changed sectors quite a bit uh, from the past, working with the, with, the, with, the, with the media, and then I see that you work with the Propulsion Fund. Now you are into gaming and entrepreneurship. So just... Tell us, tell us what, what, what you made uh, uh, go through this kind of going from the public sector to NGO and, and now later into, into entrepreneurship. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, you're really, really resourceful. Uh, you, saw, you saw that quite well because basically in the core myself, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creative guy. And... Uh, uh, how I express myself is usually speaking and writing. So those first experiences, professional experiences were a mix of what I wanted to do and what was available. Uh, and in, in, in those experiences, I always try to, to find a way to connect my creative needs with my needs for money. So, uh, that, that 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 is why I actually stepped in into the board gaming uh, uh, sector and gaming sector uh, uh, as well because um, that is something that is the field where I saw I can implement my talents and then learn something that's uh, that, that's going to add on it in order to be to make it sustainable, you know. So I mean, uh, 
if you are if you are a poet and then you you just write poems and it's it's cute it's nice and it's it's cool but then if you don't if you don't have what to eat and if people don't wanna don't wanna buy it it's not their fault it's your fault you have to find a way to 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 you know to to make it to make a product of wh whatever you do I mean that that is that is that that is how I say it. that is why I change change the fields from what I used used to do to what I'm doing now. And uh, how how is the business going? Did you do you have like product in place or have you launched it yet? Yeah, we have uh, we have MVP and it's going to be launched. We are we are focusing on our first Kickstarter campaign because that is the way for us to to reach the community that we are actually targeting. Those are gamers from the Western Western uh, countries, especially uh, United States, Canada, and Germany, UK, and and and, and those countries. Um, and in in that, uh, I would like to actually cover a couple of couple of, of things I, I I was I was noting here because you know as as a gaming startup in Serbia I don't think it's a it's a bad place to be actually because gaming community in Serbia is very is quite strong quite big I mean for for our own for for the Balkan region or at least for 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 this part of Europe and. Um, it's really prone to, to cooperation. They are self-organized. They, they're really, really eager to help. We never sent an email and then never got a reply. Whenever we like knocked on the door, people, people responded and not even responded. They actually tried to help. So th that, is, that is on the plus side. And uh, on, on top of that, I, I heard people here mentioning the, the cheapness of operating from, from, from these countries. For us, because we are making a physical product that is going to be in place soon, um, it's uh, the, the production of the, of the product and then um, uh, conceptual conceptualizing phase is really cheap, and that's not important only for like having a big margin. It's important because you have a bigger margin for testing. You you are you can test quite more times before a board game board gaming company, for example, in 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 a country where labor is much, much, much more expensive because, I mean, you're paying your designer, let's say, thousand bucks a month and he needs to pay you like three, four, five thousand, thousand bucks a month in order to, to, to keep it. Um, so th that's on that. But uh, what I see is problems here in our, in our ecosystem is uh, those problems are not connected with the companies. I mean, as an entrepreneur, nobody's gonna hand you your business. You have to you have to grind to get it. And then uh, I support the um, let's say seminars and trainings and stuff like that, that 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 is going to like give basic knowledge to people or basic insights for people that are have some kind of an entrepreneurial spirit. But um, for later stages, those those events are mostly organized for PR and not for actually helping the the, the, the teams. Um, we have we, we are really lucky because we we managed to uh, start um, corporate. I mean, we, we managed to get the support of Nordos, and we are part of their booster development program as a team, and also we are part of um, Delta Business Incubator, which are both hugely helpful one from the side of the gaming and know-how of the gaming industry, and the second from the business development side. So, uh, but none of those, I mean, both of those uh, opportunities were not handed to us. We actually went like with our product to Nordos headquarters and then knocked on the door and asked for, for, a, for, for a meeting. And then we played the game and they liked the game and that's why they, they, they called us in. And that, that's the same for, 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 Delta, for Delta Holdings. So, uh, if you if you wanna if you wanna try it if you wanna if you wanna go if you wanna work, you're fine. Honestly, you're fine. I mean, on top of that, there are some issues with um, in the later stages of understanding your market, understanding your buyer, especially if you're targeting uh, people from the from from other countries. But it, 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 you you can work around it. I mean, you you can make it happen if you if you hustle enough. Thank you, Toshan, and thank you also for the positivity and looking things into the brighter way. I would now continue with Arjanit. Uh, Arjanit, you have been lately working on, on this uh, guidebook, 
And I probably just wanted to start it with how competitive Kosovo is uh, penetrating global markets and how do you see um, entrepreneurship and what are the challenges except some of the, of the challenges that were mentioned by the previous speakers, which is access to talent, capital, logistics, payments, and etc. What are some other things uh, that you have found during your, your path into, as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you for the question. Well, uh, I think that being an entrepreneur means that uh, you don't want to put yourself in a comfort zone. So you want to uh, always look for something new, uh, something better, and of course, something that, that's challenging. And uh, in my path at Kutia, uh, I used to work uh, for other companies in, in town, and um, I learned a lot from, uh, from the companies I used to work for. And uh, when the time come, came, then we started Kutia with my co-founder, Faton Selishta, with whom I worked for five years uh, previously, which means that I knew him uh, very good uh, before we started the company, which is the main thing. Uh, I believe that uh, finding the right partner uh, in marriage and right partner in business are uh, <laughs> the two toughest or uh, the uh, decisions that you should make. And uh, if you find them uh, as as uh, and you feel comfortable with them, then uh, the road is and the path is clearer and the road is easier. So I do. I feel blessed that uh, Fatal, my partner, is um, uh, kind of uh, another component of mine uh, that fills me with uh, the tech part, and then I have the other part that uh, try to uh, see the uh, big picture of the team and uh, where we should uh, go and lead the team there. Of course, there are uh, uh, challenges uh, also at Putian in my uh, personal path, as mentioned previously. But I do believe that in our region, um, for the companies that uh, work with the local market, like there are a lot of companies that sell POS or um, e-commerce uh, only in Kosovo or Serbia or uh, Macedonia, uh, there are a lot of op opportunities because Kosovo and also countries in the region are not like countries in the... Uh, Nordic region like uh, Sweden or Norway or also countries like Switzerland uh, because in those countries I mentioned uh, the government or the uh, uh, let's say they build up solutions for the citizens in order for them to use uh, and uh, to offer them a better life in their countries in our let's say in, in our region uh, we know what kind of governments we have and we know what uh, how much they do for us to have better life uh, which means that uh, this is a big opportunity for all entrepreneurs who want to build uh, startups uh, based in their own country to develop tools and develop uh, solutions for their uh, uh, for their countries. Of course, uh, in my path, I see one of the things that uh, that I had, let's say, hard to, was hard to handle. In fact, was uh, uh, first building up team which means having a core team players that are uh, good on doing what we do and uh, to have to keep in mind that uh, we should serve only quality and uh, we should take care of our client until the uh, entire product map is uh, roadmap is done not just uh, trying to uh, fulfill ourselves with uh, uh, a lot of clients and then uh, without any uh, any result and i do believe that uh, we worked uh, hard to build up this team and uh, uh, as entrepreneur, of course, it was uh, uh, time consuming because uh, that time you could use to do something else uh, for the company or trying to uh, find new partners or do sales. But it was a very valuable time that uh, we have now created a core team that are also part of uh, ownership of the company. Uh, and uh, we try to uh, keep them. We know that uh, uh, developers mostly from Kosovo are uh, going abroad because they find uh, it's easy to find uh, jobs in Germany or uh, Switzerland. So uh, they move uh, to the countries abroad. So we try to keep them by uh, uh, making them or doing them uh, part of the business. Uh, this is one thing. And then the other thing that was uh, pretty tough was uh, doing sales and finding the right, uh, the right partners and the, the right clients. Because uh, when you are uh, working on services, if the definition of dance or not uh, set properly, then you can uh, uh, 
jumping into a loop that uh, never ends. And for the companies like ours that uh, you don't have any, uh, let's say, uh, finance from uh, investors or uh, any other third party, uh, you need to always invoice clients at the end of, at the, at the, end of the month in order to keep a uh, machine uh, working. Uh, so it, it was pretty tough and uh, I put myself, I put myself as a challenge to, uh, of course, uh, challenges I, I knew that they are not easy to, uh, uh, to achieve, like uh, uh, doubling, uh, double the, uh, let's say, the revenues from last year to this year. And uh, we are most likely achieving that. But I know that uh, it was pretty, pretty tough because we had to increase the team for 20%. Uh, and uh, then the expenses and, and all the other stuff. Uh, plus, um, on top of this was also the pandemic. And I, I think that um, being an entrepreneur is also kind of a, a responsibility to reflect positivity, not just uh, during the tough times like we had uh, during the pandemic, but also uh, living in countries like ours. I have to mention this again, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we need to reflect more than uh, we should. I usually say that if you, if uh, I would live in Rome, uh, when you wake up in Rome, you see all these uh, beautiful uh, uh, statues and all these monuments from the from the past that uh, uh, people of Rome uh, use them to live for living. They they sell guides, etc., etc. And living in Costa, you have just few monuments that. Uh, they are not even, uh, let's say, taken care of properly. So it's uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty hard to uh, to be positive. But uh, as an entrepreneur, I saw myself that um, giving positivity to the others. It was kind of giving back to, to myself and uh, uh, recharging myself by uh, by being positive to the others. And uh, Kosovo and uh, now that we are also uh, uh, people from uh, countries, uh, different countries here, I, I see also opportunities to uh, collaborate and as entrepreneurs to came up with idea how we can engage more youth from both countries, how we can uh, come up with, a, let's say, a product uh, with an event such like this or uh, even bigger to, uh, let's say, for some time to uh, forget about the politics and the other things and see that the future is not Balkans. The future is the, the globe is pretty small now. You can travel everywhere uh, within hours. So it's not a big deal to go somewhere else and start new life. So why not as entrepreneurs, uh, all of us to think about how we can join ventures and build up something for the community and uh, bring positivity in both sides of, uh, of countries. And uh, uh, here I see a lot of opportunity, not just... Uh, 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 building something that is only profitable, but also something that is social and profit as well. And uh, I do believe that we have in both communities, we have uh, masterminds that can think about something like this and uh, make a brighter future. At the end, I mean, the, the main goal for the, all entrepreneurs is to uh, do something better for the uh, uh, people who serve. Yeah. Thank you, Arjan. And you know, we have this programming languages that aren't Albanian, neither Serbian. So uh, there is a way for, for, for collaboration. Yes, we did organize with, with ICT Hub and also uh, with other colleagues uh, from Serbia some, some exchange visits. We have been receiving startups and entrepreneurs from Serbia to Kosovo. Uh, we went several times in Belgrade and visited ecosystems. And what we have seen from these kind of people who were in both countries, as none of them talked about politics. Because what we think is when, when they have business and when the money is uh, the, the, the key or they talk business, then they, they won't be talking politics. That's why probably we do believe that also through this, uh, through, through this forum, uh, we try to, to reach like, uh, the goal that prosperity uh, leads to development. And uh, hopefully, hopefully both countries in the coming years will have this opportunity to, to also do business together. Uh, because as a region, is 20 million so uh we we can compete as kosovo or as serbia we should compete as balkans with the rest of the world etc mishko i would jump to you uh because we know that there are some uh serbian entrepreneurs in grasanica Štorce, in Ovitrovica, but we don't hear a lot about them probably because also of all our priorities could you just tell us uh, in which sectors are they ori oriented 
I know I've been working with the USAID Stutz. I know some some great Serbian entrepreneurs who work with with raspberries and, uh, and, and and other berries. And I think agriculture is one of the strongest sector in that part in the in the in, in the south. But tell us, tell us what's going on. Yeah, many thanks, Ben. Of course, I see that the, the first of all, that uh, the clock is ticking basically, and the time is running out. You know, almost. I honestly wanted to say a lot more. You know, than just a few words about the landscape. You know, and about the Kosovo sub community and so on. First of all, let me let me say something that many people do not know, basically, and perhaps even you yourself. You know, not you personally, but some of. Turn off. Turn on the mic. You turned off. No, it was. <laughs> no, just... now it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Now it's okay. I said I, I wanted really to say a lot more basically about the Kosovo Serb community currently at this point of time. And I start to, to speak a bit uh, fastly, uh, faster actually in order to fit everything into, into let's say five to seven minutes max. Uh, first of all, let me say one very important thing, you know, uh, how do we stand actually within the Kosovo Serb community? Kosovo Serb community in Kosovo is currently devastated, you know, and uh, by saying that, I mean basically that we, as uh, some uh, previous speakers actually in the previous panel mentioned, I think Driton uh, was the first one, uh, that there is a huge brain drain basically, not here in Kosovo also, but throughout the region. But having in mind, you know, how devastated we are basically, any single, uh, um, uh, any single decision by the individual, especially by youngsters, is a great loss for the, such a small community, which is the Serbian one in Kosovo at the moment. So apparently, uh, let me uh, disperse some, disclose some of the data, uh, which is, uh, by the way, very important in terms of understanding how do we stand right uh, at this point of time. According to our analysis, last year, we have reached the alarm stage of, of people that would like really to leave Kosovo. I speak about the Kosovo sub community. 55% of those, you know, being interviewed, being subject to our evaluation, uh, if they see the opportunity, will migrate in the next five years from Kosovo. This is more than half of the people, actually, which is the size of 100 and, let's say, tentatively say, between 120 and 130,000, you know, individuals. Imagine that half of them leaves, you know. That, that would be absolutely a significant loss for such a small community. Of course, I know that the Kosovo Albanian community is leaving as well. Of course, and this is not the trend only in Kosovo, but this is the trend, actually, across the region. And this is something that, unfortunately, uh, none of these governments across the region, including the Kosovo and the Serbian one, have found uh, appropriate answer or the response actually to such a, such alarming data. So to me, this is crucial. Everything what you are doing, perhaps, uh, not perhaps, but yourself, for instance, uh, Innovation Center of Kosovo, Girafa, Girafa did a very good, uh, actually, uh, it, it's a great potential and so on. This is what I'm learning actually from some of my friends, etc. It's fantastic. But we need really more of these kind of programs in order to attract youngsters instead of thinking, you know, leaving the country uh, rather to stay within the country and within the region. So this is why today and many other of these kind of similar forums, you know, with not really burdened, you know, with the political issues actually should be really more focused on the economic empowerment, offering a sort of ideas or perhaps even the opportunities to those who wish at some point to get engaged or to initiate their own business, as, uh, as uh, Janetta was saying actually a minute ago. So this is something that should be really encouraged. Instead of thinking about employment within the public administration, they are supposed to seek uh, a yet uh, another opportunity, basically, which is rather a bit risky, but it has a number of different kind of opportunities. So uh, let me let me say you you asked me about the um, landscape entrepreneurs uh, landscape uh, within Kosovo. Most of them are oriented to agriculture, forestry, and uh, and to some degree fishing. You know, not many of them are engaged or have the, uh, a sort of uh, decent potential to develop the IT sector. Marco, whom you have heard already, of course, uh, with the Innovation Center of Kosovo, they try somehow to create the tailor-made programs actually for youngsters to start thinking about different approach uh, without having a sort of traditional education, but to move forward and uh, offer them something that could be really applicable to the job market actually nowadays. We are 21, 21st century, so we cannot really think we are still in the 20th century and think about you know public administration, this kind of stuff. The world is moving so fast actually and without recognition of where we are now at this point of time, 
Unfortunately, we are losing a great potential and great time actually in offering the decent, appropriate, tailor-made education to the youngsters. So this is why this is important. Of course, agriculture is that absolutely important. It's going to be in the forthcoming period of time. But imagine the uh, synergy between agriculture and digital technologies, not only by uh, having them in the market-oriented, actually, way, but also during the, the process, during the cultivation process, and during the, the, the growing process, basically, that would be a great, uh, a great potential for, for you guys, actually, who are, for those companies who are very skillful and um, having uh, the potential, basically, to develop different kind of applications. That would be really fantastic. I can bet at this point of time, you know, that nobody in the country thinks, you know, that this kind of uh, synergy between the agriculture uh, and the digital technology are feasible at the moment. Of course, they are feasible. I mean, the world proved otherwise, of course. And we have so many examples, basically, that this is very much, of course, uh, uh, possible. But unfortunately, uh, many of them are not really ready to adopt the new uh, technologies, to adapt to the, to the new changes. They rather actually would like to stay on, in the comfort zone and the, on the safety side, basically, without too much risk, actually, on the side. Uh, what is also typical for Kosovo sub community is basically something that also Driton mentioned, uh, besides the brain drain. Uh, it is the access, actually, to a Kosovo wide market. Uh, Kosovo sub community is a bit isolated. Everyone, even yourself, of course, you know, when you mention note, like, oh, my goodness, you know, immediately the trouble comes out, you know, to, across your mind. Like, OK, the note was always a problem, a sort of red, uh, a hotspot, et cetera, et cetera. But again, uh, there is a decent potential within young people, but they are still not really ready to engage that much. Why was that? Of course, there are still prejudice. There are stereotypes. And we, a part of our role, uh, part of our uh, not only active, but other civil society organizations which are not really present, perhaps, you know, they're following up on the Facebook page, you know. We all really honestly try to do our best, basically, to, to have a tight link uh, with the Kosovo Albanian majority population, of course, in order to break the stigma, in order to create more potential and possibly partnership, of course. I mean, look at our panel now, today, of course. We all communicated. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to go for a drink. For lunch, you know, we can even deepen uh, deepen our uh, uh, our collaboration. You know, find a way out actually how we can collaborate and so on. This is exactly possible with other entrepreneurs, of course, with other companies and so on. So, but what we need, we need a really uh, a continuity in that. Without it, we can speak only about fragmented parts, you know, and like a mushrooms, you know, they appear at some point, fantastic event, and then you hear nothing, you know, in the next six to nine months, you know which is for the nowadays businesses, unfortunately, not a very good model, actually, how we should really move forward, how we should really think about it you know, and move forward. Uh, let me also say a couple of minutes, actually, two to three minutes to tell you what another obstacles are. And they're pretty much of the administrative nature, but uh, very much depending over the uh, policy makers, actually, to, as I mentioned in the intro part, to address those issues and to deal with them without getting too much politics into it. For instance, Serbian companies, I mean Serbian com companies run by the Kosovo Serbs in Kosovo, usually are forced to have the double registration because apparently the operating environment pushed them basically, forced them to adopt the double registration, which, is, which means the double taxation system, double, everything is doubled, you know, without going into too much details actually on that. So this is something that both governments you know, without, as I mentioned, uh, too much of the politics aside, should really address this issue and try to find a model actually that would be applicable uh, at least within our operating environment between Kosovo and Serbia. Secondly, about the co accessing the access to Kosovo wide market, this is yet another problem. And this problem is not actually within the Kosovo Albanian society, this is uh, within the Kosovo Serb society. It is about simple but very crucial thing, you know, it's about labeling. It is being actually uh, something that you need to address uh, uh, if you want to access actually a Kosovo wide market. You need to provide the labels actually in all languages that are uh, if you want really to reach out to the potential customers, etc., etc. This is something that is very much tightly linked with the language barrier. 
And uh, 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 language barrier is not really only present in the economy. It is a present actually across this, all sectors, including the public administration. The third point about the language issues is actually about the abilities of the Kosovo Serb community to understand the rules and regulations that are, and including the custom, for instance, procedures, of course, in their native language. And this is something which is, uh, unfortunately, is in compliance with the current legislation in Kosovo, and it became a little bit of the political rather than the just a technical problem. Of course, and there is a lot more. Um, uh, we have started some years ago, even before the chambers started to cooperate, we have sp started facilitating the contact between the Kosovo North Kosovo businesses, and then we extended actually through other, uh, throughout other municipalities across Kosovo to create that tight or a better links, of course, with the Kosovo uh, Albanian businesses and Kosovo Chamber of Commerce and plus the institutions. We did quite well, but unfortunately, as I said, politics, of course, in the end, unfortunately prevailed and many other negative events, you know, instead of uh, enabling them to move forward, they unfortunately pushed them to go two steps back, actually, and to cancel all of the achievements, actually, we made it a very small organization. At that point of time, we have established a fantastic cooperation that was during the Safed Gajaliyev's time, actually, uh, being a, a president of the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Fantastic cooperation, and that was a very solid ground base, basically, for in, extending the cooperation between the businesses. But again, too much politics, you know, on the side, again, uh, get into the, the, the economy and, in a sense, you know, almost, you know, ruin the entire achievements we made. So, uh, without going into further details, basically, there are other obstacles uh, 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 that uh, that I could really list at this uh, this point of time. Some of them are related also to education. But again, I would honestly urge, and I would like to launch the the recommendations, basically in the sense that uh, those recommendations are supposed to be uh, um, um, crafted into the report, basically, and channeled directly to the key policymakers about the future. Uh, of uh, of the communities, basically, and our relations, not only in Kosovo, but of course, uh, the relation between uh, uh, Serbia and Kosovo and many others, of course, uh, that are tightly linked to, to, to our areas. But I'll move that, actually, if you allow me two minutes in the end, you know, and that would be all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mishko. Your, your contribution towards the reconciliation is magnificent, and we all admire your, your, your job there and also the NGO Active. And it was your fault that we entered uh, Mitrovica North with our ICK's activities last year. And we look forward into uh, coming more and more uh, in the North and uh, see what's the potential and invite them to attend the different events. I would like now to move on to, on the, to the opportunities and continue with Mr. Tsahani and talk more about what should we do, Mergem, uh, to, how to say, to inspire entrepreneurs into action, what are the some good opportunities, what is the bright side of Kosovo's ecosystem, uh, and what we should do on, and on, on inspiring youngsters into going into the entrepreneurship world and not look only to the public sector as the future employer. Thanks, Spant. Uh, it was a pleasure listening to previous speakers. Uh, in, in most instances, I agree with all of them. Uh, it's just a mere fact that this this panel is one hour and a half. I wish there were more so we could discuss those particular points. So uh, on the opportunities, spent, I I think there are different ways and different perspectives how to look at this, and there are different um, in America they say different ways to skin a cat. Uh, but eventually, I believe the most important one is on the individual. Well, if we are speaking strictly entrepreneurship, um, and and for that to work, I think there are in principle three group of things that need to be in place for that to work. Um, one has to do with skill set, which can be learned. One has to do with a mindset, which again can be inspired by others or driven by some sort of motive and passion, uh, but more difficult to learn. And the third one is the opportunity. So um, if we speak about the opportunity, I think in today's world, if you're speaking again entrepreneurship in the tech sector, the opportunity is there. Uh, the market is vast. To start something is not a big barrier. If we want to open an energy company, 
uh, is going to be very capital intensive and you need big investments. If you want to start in tech sector, you do need investment, but to, to make proof of concept and to get that product somehow launched, you don't. And like uh, Nicola said earlier, launching is something about growing the business, making it into a business is totally something else. But I think anybody can start in this limitation, even in Kosovo or any other country. And I think that's an advantage we have to to take uh, into into consideration. I will not go as simple as saying you just need a laptop, but uh, it can be done. Uh, but what's the most important as a message, just like in Kosovo and, and anywhere else, it's I think it takes time. Not I think I know. Um, it's not a sprint, it's, it's a marathon. I mean, even statistically, if you look at the old companies that are, have inspired me and everybody here potentially, uh, none of them has even made the dent under five years or seven years under the hood of work. And uh, if we think that within a six months or a year or two, something's gonna come out of it, I think we'll just be fooling ourselves. Well, somebody could be lucky, but statistically speaking, not likely. So I think that that mindset is very, very important. Um, and um, a lot of us are speaking about global product, but I think the region really needs regional products and local products. I know very often we say the region is small and there are this many people, but I think as a region, I think it's big enough. It's big enough, uh, I've said this before, for a unicorn, absolutely. Um, it, can, it can be done. I mean, if you look at the Balkans, it's all the states as per definition, including part of Turkey and Romania, you are looking at a 55 or more population, much more than that. The GDP of combined countries is pretty large too. The fact that not many global players are focusing here gives opportunity for growth. I don't think the region is small. I don't even think Kosovo alone is small or any other country for that matter, if you look at it. Um, if you look at retail, the industry size of retail, Kosovo goes over a billion or more. And if you look at e-commerce from one perspective and you see the proportion of e-commerce trade as, as a percent of retail, uh, where it is today and where it can go by proportionally comparing where it has been in any other developed market, see Amazon versus total retail in America 10, 15 years ago, where it is now. And you can compute that actually, you can make a unicorn. So I think opportunities on the market and a lot Entrepreneurs may be the only thing that I would say it's focused immediately global. But I think there is room to do something local and regional. And if you solve that problem well, then you can move it to the global. It's so difficult to do a product global that sells because you have competition so, so fierce. Likely any idea that we come up with, somebody has started. The difference is who sticks with it longer and who does it better, but competing at a global level right away. It's, I, I've tried, I've failed a few startups in the SaaS world. Very good product, immaculate product in our perspective. It worked, but we couldn't generate 5,000, 10,000 revenue stops, and that's not business per se. It's a start, but so I think opportunities in specifically entrepreneurship and tech, innovation and tech exist in this market if we focus for this market. And that's what we have done, and I think that works, and there is room to be done more. So one doesn't compete with one another. On the contrary, one complements one another and grows this, what we call, internet economy. And I think we have to focus more on that area versus outside. I know Kutia does a lot of uh, digitalization of some businesses through their tools, and I think that's the way to go. But having a product, I think it works more. So there is much more opportunities in this region than, than elsewhere. So that would be my uh, closing, because I know we are running out of time. I'll be happy to follow up with any other question. Thank you. Thank you, Mergen, and thank you also for, for inspiring us and young entrepreneurs in every day in your noble mission with Zeropa. Uh, you employ a lot of people. Uh, we, I remember you some several years ago. It was only you and your brother we met in the Young Entrepreneurs Fair over the USAID. So really, really, really proud of, of, of you and all. We, we spend a lot of sleepless nights in some of those ICK offices. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, so now we are running uh, out of time. I would like to probably to go to, to, to Dushan and uh, just a short closing with opportunities uh, uh, with the bright side of, of, of entrepreneurship and ecosystems in Serbia. No, it's good. <laughs> it's not good. It's okay. Uh, I think that uh, as, as we can, as we can, as we can hear from, from all the other speakers that yeah, there are the issues with uh, 
know-how, some issues with with um, um, access to capital and stuff like that, legitimacy maybe. But then I think that there, there is enough people that made it. And I think that you can learn from their success, their, mis their mistakes, they're eager to help. And you have somewhere to ask you have somewhere to go you know even if you don't know what you what you're gonna do you know even, even if you're not completely uh let's say capable of pulling it out you're pulling it yourself um i think that, that we have maybe not institutional but as an ecosystem and a market we have enough opportunities for anyone to 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 to, to make it Yes, thank you, uh, Dushan, Janita. Um, How do I would, is it good? Do they um, stop it? I would jump in right away to what I would think as a solution for what I think for myself and for my side. That what one way what we could do is like gathering um, or let's say creating a list, compiling a list of all let's say companies who have succeeded and who have uh, added so much values into both country, Kosovo and Serbia. And what we could do is create these exchange programs that would allow our youngsters to uh, move in or like rotate within these successful uh, companies and witness firsthand uh, how uh, people work there, uh, learn about their stories, uh, gain more knowledge and get all, uh, all types of various benefits through just being there and witnessing how an entrepreneur um, works and uh, by learning their stories. I think for me as a, uh, as Janita, it would be a very good opportunity to, let's say, see how uh, big companies have uh, managed to, to thrive, let's say, in this kind of, in this kind of setting. It is um, different if we're able to witness firsthand uh, successful companies in, let's say, in the West or, or in Europe in general. And I would say it's different if we are to witness uh, the success of uh, these various companies in these kind of developing countries that are kind of in the same setting. Because in that way, I would think that it would be much easier for you to adapt to the, to the learning about the challenges and uh, learning also how you can overcome by, by just learning by some, some success story or uh, successful example. That could be one way. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicola, how do you see the opportunities? Are, are good days ahead? Uh, depends. For some people, it will be good. For some people, it will be bad. Depends on how we react to the circumstances around. Like, like all the time, I think there is opportunity uh, waiting to be taken. Um, the, the actions we take now need to be maybe even more careful and like we need to move faster and act faster probably than ever before that's one of the good and the bad sides as well uh, depending on how you uh, how you as an entrepreneur are wired uh, to work uh, but in general i think that um, the the world is becoming a more global market for many different services especially in in the it um, and that it's opening up it, it it's becoming less and less important where you are located physically and uh, even like the Western Europe uh, and, and like the, the, the US, uh, in, in my opinion, I think are way more open these days to, to start and actually use uh, products from all over the, the world, not, not just our region, but like uh, even the, the, there are some really successful products for India, for example, which was kind of unimaginable uh, kind of 10 years ago, uh, which means that like the trust is opening and like it doesn't matter where you are located, you can still make an online business as soon as you can kind of find the right problem to solve and kind of go through and jump through the, the, the hoops and hopefully land on something uh, which is a big enough market opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, we'll go with uh, Ariane the last Oh, well, then we, we'll, miss we'll close it together. Yeah, um, I believe that there's a lot of opportunities now in the market uh, after the pandemic or now that we are during the pandemic. There are, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that start businesses selling products that are in need 
in those tough times. So I believe that in those kind of situation, there are entrepreneurs to see the positive side and there are the others who start and cry. Uh, I like to be in the position of uh, seeing the bright side. And I believe that there are uh, opportunities, uh, uh, especially for the companies who are online, uh, like uh, Giraffe or uh, uh, other friends in here, and also for the companies who offer services for the companies who want to digitize their processes or uh, they want to become part of the digital world. Uh, I see bright future in the upcoming month and in the upcoming years. So I do believe that uh, Costco will have more entrepreneurs uh, by the end of this year. Thank you, Mishko. Any last words for this panel? No, just one minute, Max. Actually, I said uh, I would really like to say a couple of recommendations actually in the air. Uh, very much needed. Um, we know, uh, I mean, the things are actually not really quite positive and, uh, and so bright actually among the Kosovo sub community, which means they're not really hopeless. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, they, we, first of all, need a very strategic uh, and very, uh, very strategic response uh, in order by the institutions in order to develop the economic uh, strategy for the municipalities, uh, uh, you know, uh, with Kosovo sub majority uh, population in Kosovo in order to give them a little bit of the boost, basically, and push them to, to meet the current market demands, you know. That should be really, uh, that should define the strategic sectors and, uh, and objectives, of course, and it's supposed to be done at the midterm basis, actually. Secondly, very important, and this is equally actually for Serbs, Albanians and others who live in Kosovo today, uh, to include um, the, uh, in the university uh, process, basically in the formal way of education, the development of the innovation uh, and in the entrepreneurship, of course, especially among the youth people. In other words, uh, need a very great need actually of a tailor-made education that would be able actually to meet the market demands, you know, in the forthcoming period of time. Uh, the third very important factor is basically to work on strengthening the institutions for business support and development of the further business skills. Of course, this is not really up to us. You know, it, it is uh, about the institutions and about our facilitation of those which actually, not a wish, but uh, those needs actually towards the central level institutions and also to strengthen the business cooperation, which is nothing new, basically, but there is a great need, actually, to strengthen the business cooperation between uh, enterprises from Kosovo uh, and Serbia, and especially when it comes, of course, to the innovative technologies, of course, like uh, uh, about the IT sector, of course, and others. Uh, we need also, besides that, as I mentioned about the language barrier, the language barrier is something that we really need to think about uh, the model, how to overcome that, of course. Otherwise, we're going to end up definitely, as we today um, uh, ended up with myself, of course, uh, without possibilities, of course, to engage uh, uh, those entrepreneurs, of course, because uh, they're lacking skills. They're lacking skills, actually, to speak English language and so on. And this is, this is exactly the limitation, basically, to engage with uh, the other community. Albanians and Serbs nowadays, as I said in the intro part, you know, we lost the momentum. We lost the, uh, that connection, actually, with each, which is very much applicable to my generation, speaking to some degree a part of Albanian language, but of course, uh, those Albanians who speak uh, Serbian language. And we are just forced, actually, to use the English. Thank you, Mishko. Thank you, everyone, for, for, uh, for the session. I really enjoyed a lot. It was an honor listening to all of you. I'm going to close this, this session with a quote I like a lot. And it says, entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life most people won't, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. Thank you so much. Bye, and we'll look uh, into the first panel of the five minutes. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.
then achievements in your past. Just tell us who you are, what you do, and then we'll continue with Arta and uh, the third one with us today. It's very kind of you, Shvet. Thank you for having me and thank you for putting on this very timely uh, and very thoughtful, hopefully very useful uh, day. So my name is John Yuanovich, uh, based in New York. Uh, I am a partner in ICTF Venture, uh, which is one of the first early stage investment funds based in the Balkans, based in Belgrade, uh, partnered with ICT Hub. So I believe uh, many of you hopefully listen to my colleague and partner, Costa Andrich, earlier today. Uh, we really focus on finding young, talented teams, helping nurture them, obviously helping finance their ideas, but really mentoring them uh, to build businesses uh, regionally focused that have global potential. Um, so I'm very, very fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, by day also, uh, I'm an investment director at Mercuria, one of the largest global commodity trading firms uh, in the world, uh, and very grateful to um, be also active in some civic initiatives that the Belgrade Fund for Political Excellence that Marco and Sonia uh, do a tremendous job running. And so uh, very much look forward to today's discussion. Thank you so much, Mr. Ivanovich. Uh, Mr. Ozaine, I know you, I'm, I'm, I find it really difficult to calling you like this, but <laughs> your mic is on. Just turn it, turn the mic on. Uh, I said thank you, and I hope I don't have to refer to you as Mr. Dila. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, hi to the audience. Uh, my name is Arta Shehuzaimi. I am an entrepreneur. I uh, am focused with uh, my businesses, with my startups or scale ups, um, uh, in improving the quality of education, especially with focus in technology, as we believe that. Kids today need to be prepared for a digital age, a, a computer age, uh, and uh, understand technology as a tool to create with. And um, since we work with ages 8 to 18, uh, it is important that uh, we kind of instill inspiration for engineering. And most of the work that we do is focused on that end. Um, as an entrepreneur, um, I also deal with, uh, let's say, two ends of the problem. One is um, the hiring of people, of people that uh, create the companies that we, we aim to create, and uh, also in actually uh, contributing to preparing the future ones. So it's, a, it's quite an interesting topic to treat today with you in this panel, and I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much, Alta. Uh, Mr. Nete, another fan of mine, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but... Astrid, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. Sorry for my uh, behavior. <laughs> I was a little bit having difficulties after I had returned back. Sorry about No, no, I Do you hear us? Hello, Astrid? Yep. Do you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so we'll just uh, wait for you the short introduction of who you are and what you do in Taku. Hi, uh, so it's a pleasure. I've been listening to you guys all day, uh, more or less. I've, I think I've heard everyone here uh, speak and introduce uh, himself and herself. Uh, let me just break it out short. Uh, Cactus is one of the leading companies in providing uh, ICT solutions and uh, in general service and general IT services in the country. Uh, not just the country, we've, we've uh, implemented various types of uh, solutions all over Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro, Germany, Switzerland. We are pretty active today in Switzerland. Uh, we've done some uh, minor work in UK. So more or less, we are a company in development. We have a, uh, a pretty good uh, stack of teams and individuals that are uh, heavily involved in the market uh, product development, of course, and IT and software development uh, all the time. So more or less, I lead a team of around 100 full-time employees. So we're pretty good in doing business all over the region. Uh, I've been in the market for like now 18, 19 years. And this is, uh, Cactus is uh, the company that I joined just recently, one and a half years ago. So more or less, uh, I think I consider Cactus as a, um, let me say just a hub in Kosovo for uh, any types of IT services, more or less. Uh, we were uh, involved in almost every critical governmental and almost some uh, non-governmental project in the country and uh, pretty active in the in the Albanian speaking world as well. So we are pretty active in Albania. We are doing some very good projects in Macedonia as well uh, for the government. So we are, uh, we are heavily working uh, with uh, all the major teams of IT and software companies in the region. Of course, we, are, we don't do business by ourselves. I'm uh, pretty keen to joining and building relationships with companies uh, without boundaries, uh, without uh, political boundaries. So we're pretty open to new, uh, to new uh, projects, new ideas, developments. And so I just made it pretty brief. Uh, Cactus as a company is now like uh, 17 years old, 18 years old. And it's been through from a startup to a steady, steady organized and pretty well developed company. So uh, I'm proud to say that we have a pretty good reputation in the country and all over. Yeah. Uh, I so tried to make it very brief. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you so much, Astrid. We'll continue also with Mr. Sapkovic once, once more because you did the opening, but still for, for those who don't know you. <coughs> uh, yes, uh, good day to all. Uh, once again, from my side, Marco Sapkovic, Executive Director of Belgrade Fund for Political Excellence. Very happy to be with you today. Sonia Lichter, President, is also uh, here listening uh, in on our, our conversation. And uh, this is uh, one of the, uh, I would say, activities with which we are culminating the process, the, pro the project, uh, Changing Mind Trust Through Innovation, which has uh, been going on for over three years now. Over three years now, three and a half to be exact. Uh, very ambitious uh, project which we have been implementing together with uh, D4D uh, from uh, uh, Pristina, NGO Active from Mitrovica, and uh, another small organization from Belgrade Trans, Trans Conflict. And the idea was to bring together professionals from different groups, different areas, different fields of knowledge, and to uh, expose them to new ideas, new approaches, uh, take them through some new exciting formats and to see what's out there. Because uh, when we started uh, getting more involved in what is uh, called the normalization between uh, Serbia and, and, and Kosovo, uh, we immediately felt that we need to give some substance to it. Uh, and um, actually, one of our first meetings, uh, I'm now really going back in time, and Sonia will help me with this, uh, was in uh, 12, 12, uh, 2012, 2013, when we uh, brought together uh, ecologists and urban planners. So we really started to uh, uh, bring together people from, let's say, another way around. Uh, but also, we have been involved in many different aspects, and uh, we are, as an organization, really committed to this um, a long and for many frustrating, but also incredibly rewarding process. Thank you so much, Marco. Let's let's go into the discussion. Uh, I would like to start with Mr. John Jovanovic. Uh, previously, we just had a, a, a panel with with entrepreneurs, and why while they were listing challenges, main challenges they face in both countries, in Kosovo and Serbia. It says that uh, except the access to fighters, which is the biggest constraint or the problem, the second comes the access to, to talents and, and, and to, 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 to the new uh, people unemployed. So most of them are, are, are facing problems of finding the proper people to employ. And uh, since we are talking about skills and the jobs of the future, uh, what are we offering to our kids? Uh, what kind of skills do, do we need to, to move on? Because what they say, because uh, some entrepreneurs from Serbia, and I'm, I'm sure that it's also in Kosovo the same problem, is that universities are outdated now. I mean, they are preparing people with diploma, but with no skills. They are not getting uh, producing people uh, who are employable. So do you think, what's, what's the problem, Mr. Jovanovic? And uh, what do you see as, as uh, like a general overview on, on, in terms of the skills and, and are we ready for the future? Yeah. So first of all, please, please call me John, and uh, apologies again for being in the shadows here, uh, like as a, as a sort of shadow figure speaking to you from there. Um, look, I, I think I'm going to answer this question in a, in a unique way, it's just unique to my personal experience. And so, unfortunately, I actually don't have, I, I think one of, our, one of our colleagues on the previous panel said it best when really said, look, your skill set married to mindset looking for opportunity, right? So those three things coming together, I think. Unfortunately, I personally don't have skill sets that a lot of the tech talent and look, Art, I could probably really benefit from being a, a young J coder or maybe eight or nine or 10 year olds that you're teaching, right? Because I, I don't know anything about it. I think the question directly, but I think one thing that the universities are really failing to arm um, the, the next generation with is the right mindset and the feeling of agency in their lives and the feeling that they can really take take control of their own path, right? And so where I spend the vast majority of my time uh, when you know mentoring young teams and talking them through business building, because remember, we're meeting them at the very, very beginning of their journey, right? Some of them haven't even you know, crossed the precipice uh, and heeded the call to adventure, right? They're really thinking about, do I leave my job or do I leave university? Do I do these things? Do I set out on this path to really build a business, to do something new? Um, and so we've, I, I focus them in on how are you critically thinking about that? And that mindset's important. And so I think, you know, we really break it up into three buckets. It's really, you know, idea, team, and plan. 
right? And thinking very critically about, do I have an idea that has the potential to actually be a startup or a scalable business? Am I focused on customers or am I focused on users? Um, am I looking to solve a problem that's truly 10 times better? Do I have that ambition, right? That's where we're really pushing people is to feel that you with the right team, second point, right? And look, I think uh, uh, there's plenty of success stories in the region uh, to, to borrow from experience, right? Look, I, I would be, as a young person today, I would be really using COVID as an opportunity to really pick people's brains. Look, you're having a tremendous, first of all, you're having a return of talent, oftentimes to their home countries, right? For various other visa issues or otherwise. You're having people who sit around and calls like this all day, who otherwise may not have had time to take a mentorship call. And so that, that the mindset of proactively reaching out, taking control of your own destiny, look, the opportunity set is never gonna be perfect. And let's not lie to ourselves. It's not perfect anywhere, right? Some people most certainly have it harder than others, but understanding that taking some of those proactive steps to get there. And then look, I love I loved something I read on Us Street. I read a quote of yours, which is, you know, work hard in silence, let success be the noise, right? Um, I love that because I think the third element that we really focus on is plan, right? And so methodically plan how you're going to do this and focus on your region, right? Because you, it's, you, you, want, you need people who are your champions in every single phase of your life, right? And I think that's what university, another thing, and I'll, I'll end on this point to, to pass it on, but university kind of fails to show you that in every stage of your life, you need people cheering you on, both literally and figuratively, right? And helping you along your journey. And until I started reaching out to people older and more successful, I didn't really appreciate that there was a tremendous capacity for mentorship and that people want it because all the way, somebody has helped you. Somebody's helped me immensely, right? And so I feel it's my duty to, sort of help others where I can, but we can come back to it in more detail. But if I, if, I, if I had to focus on one thing that I think this generation desperately needs is, is a stronger mindset. And that's what really, look, going back to Arda and, and Jay Coder and, and, and your initiative, look, those children there are learning code and they're learning hard technical skills, but I bet very thoughtfully, you're making sure that they, some of the mindset that you have also uh, rubs off on them. So I, I think that's where we could be a lot more thoughtful. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ivanovic. Yeah, pretty great to hear such, such great insights. Orta, I have here the lab box. Uh, <laughs> just probably just tell us how you know uh, you were competing with Lego. Come on. And you were like, really oh, no. <laughs> I know. I know. Bless you. Man. Well, I didn't hear you well. How, how did it start with the, with the lab box and also with deep orders and how is it going? Because you are also in a mission on, on creating the next generation. Because as more more you invest in, in the kids with the lab box, the deep orders, they will be more prepared, young entrepreneurs doing complex education when they get older, but also a replicate the game when they want to go into the next generation. Oh, um. Um, where do I start? Uh, so um, it, it, it really begins with, um, with a personal story. So I myself am a computer science engineer. And um, uh, knowing how to uh, bring an idea to life through technology is really a powerful thing to have. Um, it lets you do things. It, likes, it lets you kind of... Uh, uh, feel the empowerment that comes with that type of creation, and I've always, um, I've always enjoyed uh, that particular skill set. Now, um, going back to some of the things that were uh, importantly addressed by John, and then I'll, I'll kind of connect uh, back to uh, to Labox and everything that we're uh, or, or the path that we're walking right now. I agree fully with a stronger mindset. I think uh, everything beyond university or finding a job uh, needs a very strong mindset. And I think that that is uh, very well instilled um, in kids or in this new generation early on. Um, we take it, uh, uh, let's say it like this, we take it to heart to um, kind of uh, prepare this new generation uh, with skills to create uh, with technology because in our mind uh, we compare it to 
the generation. So, so if my if somebody from my generation didn't learn English, uh, today there would be uh, severe disadvantages for them. And uh, to create the same analogy, I really think that people or this new generation of kids that uh, will will find um, will not uh, this generation of kids that will not demystify technology uh, as a tool to create with they will indeed be left let's say with not with not the proper the proper advantages for them to really thrive in the future and this is uh, backed up by huge demands in the job market by uh, let's say uh, new roles or new new types of jobs being created on daily basis and I think that um, it's it's so obvious that um, um, uh, not only us, but there is a overall global movement in this direction. However, uh, what we what we also see very often is um, this uh, this focus on this focus on just training rather than uh, working with uh, actually equipping kids with a framework around uh, of how to think around problem solving and this is where we where, where we go and go in now what we've structured from an entrepreneurial point of view we did create services where we provide training for kids to teach them anything from coding electronics robotics uh, creating website and things like that um, one particular uh, topic uh, so, so it is very important for us that we focus on the fundamentals but kids that we teach in the young ages they need to be familiar with uh, technology not only as one word but actually to understand the depths and the why and the, um, uh, the depths and the spectrum of the whole field that's why we kind of stick to the fun fundamentals it is very important for us to teach them uh, anything from coding hardware the interaction of both of these and when it came to electronics um, we initially in our curriculum we were teaching kids uh, uh, electronics by using products made for engineers like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. But um, uh, those in the hands of kids, uh, so electronics generally is very sensitive, and in the hands of kids they used to break so easily and cause quite a lot of discouragement. And uh, the other products that kind of promised to teach uh, electronics, they were so well engineered that they basically ended up being like plug and play toys for kids and kind of constrained the learning. That's why we decided to create this new library of electronics, which has a bit of a different philosophy where we kind of preserve the real worldness and allow kids to make mistakes and build with them. Um, as a as a whole mission, it is um, something that, um, from a perspective, so uh, we take it upon ourselves to kind of provide or create these solutions for kids to learn, and uh, we we enjoy doing so doing that. Um, we enjoy doing that very much. The fact that we don't stop only on the services, but we just go ahead and all the obstacles that we identified that are solvable uh, we we do solve them and i guess um i guess opening up journeys like that is is what makes oh what makes a difference so uh from that perspective i'm, I'm really enjoying what's what's next to come today we serve uh quite a big number of kids and we hope only to grow the number i'm pretty sure of that you're doing great <laughs> Uh, Asleta will continue with you because we know that Cactus exists or it was established several years ago. Uh, but then you spin off the Cactus Education. Why did you decide to open Cactus Education? Why was the spark? Why was the reason for, for, for that action? At the beginning, I would say Cactus Education was, as it's one of the, uh, one of the first or the first uh, privately owned IT education academy in the country. At the beginning, it was thought as we would um, just start with uh, trying to build up people for ourselves, for our company. And then it started to be a local academy of giving people opportunity, not uh, just having them uh, taught uh, networking, 
scripting, uh, software development. It was a, the thing was that we should give an opportunity. Uh, the trend was that technology was booming after 2000, especially in Kosovo after the conflict. So uh, the idea was to give a chance to the, to the youngsters. And then it became an academy with a pretty good prestigious, uh, uh, prestigious uh, behavior in the country. Uh, we'll did, we built up the team, we built up the instructors, we came up with uh, certain uh, academies globally known as the Pearsons. Um, we've connected with Microsoft. Today we are, after 15 years, 16 years of partnership with Microsoft, Cisco, so more or less the global players were present here. We started building up uh, a very good developers, networking guys, engineers, and that's the way it started. Uh, so today, uh, the interconnectivity of people and skills and uh, what is needed in the market, I think it's been a little bit disrupted um, after the pandemic. Uh, we've been disrupting uh, the Kosovo market with new products and, 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 and services since, uh, since the establishment. Today, the skills necessary are definitely uh, in a variable mode. We are gradually and uh, pandemics just uh, fast forwarded uh, to a very fast moving environment of changing the necessity of having new skills. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, people are beginning to acknowledge uh, the fast uh, fate uh, that it, they need to, to, to introduce to themselves in order to be uh, globally recognized, recognized in the market. They need to build up new teams very much faster than previously. So uh, the pandemics gave, uh, gave more gas, let's say more, it pumped up the, uh, the necess necessity to change. Uh, what Cactus today implements is uh, uh, very strong, I would say a very strong buildup of people, a very strong presence of uh, having the skills developed. Uh, not necessarily uh, that we would like to say that they have to go through university. Of course, that would be the pretty good stance. But however, we have a pretty good uh, uh, team members that are going through the university, but rather they are building up uh, their skills on their practice and they propel uh, during their uh, during their practice works in in uh, in our in our institution. Uh, we've been very heavily involved in trying to introduce uh, the new, I would say not new, globally they're not new, but uh, uh, critical thinking uh, environment is very important on top of those known skills that we require for an IT company. Yes, we all want so good software development. We all want those pretty good coders but at the end of the day, it's not just that. Uh, at the end of the day, we are trying to build up uh, people that uh, really understand the business and then try to develop what the, what the uh, necessities for those businesses are. Uh, we are trying to, we are very heavily involved in, in explaining what digital transformation means to local businesses. And uh, this is a, a, a a phase of education for our market as well. Our businesses are, especially our SMEs, uh, we are in a phase of trying to, to, to educate all the leaders, the company owners, the managers, the executives on what they need to, you know, comprehend in this digital uh, transformation phase. Those skills are really necessary. The, the skills that are really necessary um, uh, for, for their next step of development, especially after the pandemic. I keep repeating the pandemics since I think most of the businesses saw the necessity of changing. Uh, as, as a good saying says uh, that everything, anything that is constant is the change. So I will, I will definitely agree with that. So yeah, Cactus is heavily involved in this. Thank you, Astrid. I will go back now to Mr. John Ivanovich. Um, in, the, in the previous panels, we talked that 
I mean, when it comes to technology and the ICT sector, uh, Kosovo and Serbia can compete like uh, as a single country because if you count the entire region is nearly 20 million. So, what are some uh, your perspective on what should the region, uh, including Kosovo and Serbia, do in order for their communities and uh, societies to 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 be a bit more competitive with the Western Europe and also the U.S. And also, what should we do in order to have a great system of generating some skilled people and also helping the countries uh, or the officers stay in these countries? Because we have mentioned that one of the main problems of, of, of the entire Balkans is that the brain drain people are, are going out or trying to go to the Western Europe and the US, probably because they, they, they lack the, the infrastructure or they don't see the, the opportunities or, or the jobs. Well, we know that sometimes when we pitch this idea of uh, inviting someone, someone else to come and open a store in Kosovo, for example, we also joke sometimes when we say that, look, you know, you have a good internet penetration, then you can buy a macchiato for 50 cents or pay the maximum 300 euros for the, for the rent in downtown Pristina. So if you look in the brighter side, there is heaven working in Serbia or in Kosovo, even though you are, you are coming from, from the region. So what should we do on like, uh, yeah, making this this more attractive to our youngsters and also making the entire region more competitive to the to the rest of the world. So uh, I, I presume when you say we, I think you mean people, we on the phone, right? And or we on this panel and and we in the ecosystem, uh, because I think we can't. This region can't wait for other people to sort of come and superimpose and sort of fix some of its problems and. The one thing that I think has been most encouraging is to, and I think we do a really poor job in the region in its storytelling. I think of storytelling in the sense that there are success stories to be told. Uh, being honest about that journey and what it looks like, <clears throat> right? Because as somebody said it earlier, you know, that journey at the outset is very lonely and challenging. Uh, but to give people, to show people that they're, the opportunity to improve your local surroundings is as compelling as leaving them, right? That's that challenge, right? That's the efficient frontier. And so if we can show that there's potential to do something uh, extraordinary locally uh, with your life and with your journey and, and to you know, create wealth and create a life that is worth living, um, that, that's a huge hurdle. I, I agree with you. It's really challenging to do that in a siloed fashion, right? Well, candidly, Companies that uh, we invest in, that I back, that I spend time with in the U.S., view the U.S. market as too subtle to do that. So you can imagine now not having regional economic cooperation is, is, you know, is truly an existential crisis, right? And so one thing that I've been very fortunate to see is that at least the young entrepreneurs with whom I've been very fortunate to work view the region as a unified opportunity set, which is why I think conversations like this are important. So seeing that, you know, and look, every good team worth backing from, from my personal perspective, I'm speaking for John, not for ICT Adventure now, has to have tremendous ambition, right? But it's, it's my job to make sure that they see that the very beginning steps of that are being dominant in your region, right? Not in your country, not in your municipality, not being dominant in your region. Because, yeah, and, and I'm sure um, Austria has seen this with Cactus, right? They are dominant. They are number one in their market, right? The difference between number one and number two is tremendous, right? And coming back to my point earlier about champions, people want to know that you have dominated your local market and that you've made a local impact and that you have local businesses, as Austria said, who are willing to take care on the product or service that you're also. While, while I, I really want to push a, an ambitious mindset, that is truly global, right? Seeing that there's opportunity to work with businesses and to create markets locally, if not capture them. Um, I think that's a really key step in mm -hmm. storytelling and mentorship and coming together. Yeah. Or having some troubles with the center, like like you, you, 
you have uh, in Krishna, which I'm very eager to visit hopefully soon. That's a really important step because, uh, you know, look, we have young children, right? Our children are, are all under seven years old, but they, they, their peers are sometimes a lot more credible messengers than their adults. And so creating forms and creating opportunities for some of these young people to learn from each other is tremendous. That's okay. We, we, we desperately need some, some ICT service out, out here uh, where I am. So look, oh, just in, in, in wrapping, I think creating forms and opportunities for mentorship and for people to learn from their peers, because they're oftentimes more credible uh, sources of information. Uh, their credibility scale for young people is, is quite high. And so we need to do a better job of doing that. Thank you, John. And yeah, please do consider Pristina for your visit. Whenever you are in the region, there are plenty of good, good opportunities, good, some good startups. Uh, also need, you know, investments and everything. Uh, so I will now continue to ask that. I said I had just read, uh, you know, that the famous news that 80% that of jobs that will exist in 2030 aren't invented yet. So what are we doing? What are we, we teaching our kids in the school system? And how, how, how do we prepare for this terrifying, I would say, future? It's, I mean, just imagining it looks quite, quite hard. I would say the whole region in general needs to step up, uh, speed up the process of introducing a completely new system. Uh, especially in our country. So we need to implement uh, radical changes in the education system, implement and introduce techno more technology, introduce more youngsters in the education system. We expect uh, more and more uh, help from the uh, international organizations in order to propel this and fast forward the process of uh, education system, the new education system that we need to implement in the country. Uh, new processes of uh, starting from the preschoolers and to the rest are pretty important. Uh, I would say that uh, I would say that the, uh, the whole the whole system needs to be radically changed. Uh, today, we, I think, on this case, ARTAP is very heavily involved in, in youngsters in teaching them the first steps of technology. But this is rather more than just technology. I think that we need to uh, simply analyze uh, the whole system from the first grade and prior that uh, up to the higher, uh, higher mid school and higher high school. Uh, what what are we doing with the what are we doing with the with the education system? Uh, we today are producing uh, diplomas uh, with le with less skills, uh, with less advanced uh, perspective for the youngsters than we did 25 years ago. Uh, we today are a machine of having. Uh, printouts of uh, university diplomas rather than uh, teaching them uh, the, the behavior in, the, in any type of, let's say, in business, uh, uh, business environments, technology environments, how to uh, get the products developed, produced, etc. So the practicality of uh, development has been lost in our, in our region, I think in our country especially. And this is what we need to concentrate on. What we did um, in, in, in Cactus, and I think, uh, and I know that uh, several other academies in the country and region are pretty much developing these new skills completely different on how the, the system is being developed from the state. Uh, so we are seeing radical changes in this. And we now are thinking, my kids are thinking that uh, they should go to IT courses rather than some, I don't know, uh, subjects in the, in the school. So uh, we see uh, a major disruption in the education system. Uh, while technology has been seen as a barrier, I think we have to teach our uh, leaders uh, 
that the technology is rather a mate, is rather our co uh, coexistent in order for us to change the system. Uh, the, why the the system, why the state system, why the statesman sees the technology as a barrier is probably that we need to uh, uh, rather change the, uh, the 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 politic environment, politics environment in the region completely in order for us to bring it to light uh, some different methods of teaching rather than the old ones that we have been introduced since uh, after World War II. So uh, I think a major change will need to, to happen in the country. What we, Cactus Education, what uh, other uh, academies are doing, and I know J-Coders are doing, and others are trying to implement new methods of teaching um, in hand practice uh, of uh, developing products, developing new services, skills, and et cetera. That would be the, the change that we need to happen in the institutional and governmental uh, schooling system as well. So we, we are heavily involved in trying to implement the same. We, our company does a lot of presentations in the governmental institutions in order for them to adapt new technologies. We do a lot of uh, uh, product uh, presentations, uh, platforms, technologies in order for uh, for uh, the governmental institutions to, to, to get to know more about the technologies that uh, are being introduced to the world and bring up to the local to the local schooling system, education system. Thank you, Astrid. Uh, we'll probably hear something about um, from Mr. Mirza Stavkovic with regard to the CSO's perspective of how do you see these these, these changes and, and uh, the entire subject. Um, yes, thank you, Sven. Well, there are two points I would like to raise, and uh, both of them concern uh, three soft skills, actually, communication, networking and advocating or advocacy, but doing it together uh, across uh, sector lines. Uh, first point would be, you know, coming from civil society, uh, I would like to turn your attention to one possibility, potential uh, creative outlet for IT entrepreneurs, which is precisely cooperation and working together with civil society organizations. Um, I mean, there's first and for first thing, uh, both Sonia and myself were uh, at a meeting some five years ago in one of these uh, uh, science technology parks. Uh, we actually took the group to, to, to this particular one in Zvezdara. And uh, I remember one of the speakers saying that there is not only innovation in the world of IT, but also social innovation in general. And uh, although our market, I mean, our clients are different and arguably they are more interested in upholding certain values uh, than, than making profits, they still expect a certain product. And uh, I think there's nothing new because we have been living with this application of new technologies in, in, in civic activism for, for years now. And I remember well when, when this uh, started in Belgrade some, some 10 or 11 years ago when we were uh, attending some of the first, uh, first events. Um, efforts to use digital technologies to improve efficiency and effectiveness of urban services, for instance, or uh, transparency, still much present, use of digital technology to make information available that is otherwise uh, inaccessible. Uh, then co-production, um, opportunities for all to participate, uh, brainstorm something new online. And, and finally, also much, much debated and, and still unrealized the, the dream of uh, uh, e-democracy that some countries have been very successful in. And I think civil society has experimented with these new approaches. Uh, we all had to learn uh, with the help of our colleagues from IT community, for instance, how to first how to host a hackathon. Uh, but we still have to find ways to utilize these applications when we develop them. I mean, still, I think our, our, our thinking is much uh, constrained. We, we, we remain uh, framed within the projects and we don't uh, think uh, further. I mean, it cannot be uh, that hard. Uh, there are ample opportunities for cooperation uh, and why not being part of different consortiums when applying for funding? We uh, tried that with ICT Hub and ICK uh, applying for an EU grant. Uh, we were un unsuccessful, uh, but uh, I have no doubt that soon one of these uh, cross-sector partnerships 
will be supported. And, and, and the second point, uh, because we have an ongoing project which is called From My Town, From My Country, uh, supported by uh, German uh, GIZ, um, uh, is the idea is something that I think we are all very, very uh, frustrated with and we are thinking hard of is how to identify those uh, untapped opportunities for Serbia's development or those uh, underused opportunities. Uh, precisely because we are concerned with all the problems that were mentioned here from brain drain, uh, education, uh, uh, communities that uh, represented something in times before that have lost their potential, that are at risk of dying out. And what we have learned, yes, small businesses are a key link, and there is an interdependence that we can help them understand, and we are ideally, ideally situated to do that. Uh, however, how aware they are of this fact is, is another, another matter. We need to help them become more aware. Um, also, the uh, application of new technologies in the work on non-governmental organizations, civil sector in the field is slower than it could be. Uh, we start with projects where we need to reach out to younger generation, but I have to say that we feel that we are failing as well. Uh, and, and sometimes this pro these projects actually cost, cost a lot of money, but the result is unsatisfactory. So one of our tasks in upcoming months will be on, on this particular project that I mentioned will be to bring together, uh, engage, educate small businesses which are not in the IT to help them navigate this ecosystem we were talking about throughout the day in terms of sales and online presence. Of course, with help of people who know more about this than, than, than we do. Uh, and, and final point, what do startups in general complain about from these online meetings that we had? I mean, nothing new. Uh, role of the state, taxation policy, and uh, assistance, uh, assistance know-how, which they actually, of course, don't expect only from the state. Oh, that's a train. Yeah, there is no one in Pristina, so we I haven't seen train in 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 in, in some years. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Savkovic. Uh, I would like now to continue to Orta. Orta, you, you've seen uh, we were talking about impossible, uh, whether we should include in the programming into the curriculum and the school. Again, again, Sven, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? No, I hear you better now, yes. So we were talking, uh, um, the other discussion is whether uh, we could include music and programming of the primary schools, the, 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 the educational system. Uh, do you think that, uh, that we are ready for it or uh, are there challenges? Um, absolutely, yes. So the question is, but um, um, how I would, so, so are, are there challenges? I mean, yes to challenges, yes to uh, including uh, such a curriculum into primary schools. I think that uh, kids who learn early on uh, how to write programs uh, or just understand that it's just another language, uh, then they tend to um, kind of embrace it more naturally and think of it more, um, uh, think of it more easily in terms of actually using these technologies. I mean, we've seen a, a great success stories, successful businesses that have been uh, grown by people that started learning how to code. However, uh, to not really narrow down the perception of learning how to code as the formula to success, because it's not. I mean, it, I, I do think it is a necessary skill for the future, but the complexity of coming to success is mu much bigger than that. Um, when, when it comes to primary schools, um, the job of any education is basically to teach kids about the world around them. And that isn't only technology, it's also how to, um, um, how the world around them works, how to socially behave, how to present, and there are many skills that kind of uh, create a well-formed person ready for success. Uh, when it comes to primary schools, especially in, in, our, um, in, in where we live in, in the region, I think that um, the challenges are big. Uh, the challenges are... Um, the, the ch challenges are many. I have, I have myself uh, three daughters, two of them go to primary school, 
one is in the fourth grade and the second one is in the in second grade and i see what they're i see what their experience is but is it with education so it's there is a lot of work to be done however one thing that i find really positive or i i try to encourage myself is that kids they don't only learn in school they learn everywhere they are so um i hope that um, generally by providing them different experiences that don't not necessarily come from school we're actually helping them craft the um craft their personalities into uh into into people that will know what they want and hopefully be able to pursue that um right now our educational system faces not only uh let's say teachers or educators that are not prepared because they, they, they themselves are not from the fields of of technology to bring coding into schools or to bring any kind of technological uh, curriculum into schools we also face uh, problems with infrastructure i think that most of our schools are not equipped with, with computers and um, if you do want to find a solution that kind of addresses the masses um, then it needs serious uh, decision making and serious commitment to actually ha and, and do it. Um, I personally take quite a lot of pride in the fact that we serve around 800 kids yearly only in Kosovo to teach, but when then I compare that number to how many kids actually live in Kosovo, then I understand that we are just a fraction. I mean, a very, very small fraction of, of how many kids need this type of education. Um, sadly, um, it's not from a perspective that I come from, it's not that with a venture or with a startup like Jcoders or Labbox, we can fix this. We, we do try to create communication with the parents, but then again, it's always a subject, whether is the parent, does they have economical, um, uh, power to support this additional education? Then do they have computers? Do they understand what we're offering in the beginning? Because I guess there are quite a lot of families that still don't understand what is going on and how fast the world is changing, especially on that technological note. So it's a, it's very challenging, but um, one thing that I can promise is that we're not going to stop trying. <laughs> so that's, um, that's, that's where we are and that's, that's where we're, we will continue. Thank you, Arta. Uh, I will go now back again to Mr. Ivanovic. You know, Kosovo has a few best of uh, living in the Western uh, Europe and the US. Serbia has two best of as well. Do you think that diaspora is playing his role uh, on bringing some uh, good quality, uh, probably education systems or uh, remittances that are being sent to, to their families in the region? Or, or, the, or the, is the diaspora playing, playing his role on trying to improve the, the, the environments, uh, the ecosystem in both countries and also in the Balkans? Or are you just, because as we know, we have some jokes here, they are just spent sending money, cash, and people are not working here because they just stay there. They know that they got some 300, 400 euros from Switzerland and they just take coffees during all the day. So do you think that uh, diaspora is playing the role or it should, should change the, 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 the attitude towards the, the region? I think there's tremendous potential for the diaspora to do more in uh, offering an honest world view, right? I think all, all, artists said a bunch of things that I wrote down that were incredibly insightful. One of them was you know, using technology to teach, teach kids about the world, right? About the world around them that they may not necessarily be able to access. And so I think offering those structural and foundational lessons of you know, life, life outside of the region uh, by the way, it's it's opportunities, but also it's challenges, which are quite real. Um, I, I don't think that we do as good of a job as we can in the diaspora, um, and I think there's a lot more potential to it. Uh, I want to come back to something Matko said, which which I think has is is very oftentimes overlooked, right? So if you are trying to build a business locally, or if you have aspirations, or if you want to teach, you know, if you if you want to take the advantage of the opportunity to solve problems 10 times better than your competitor, right? Speaking to civil sector and civil engagement and understanding, look, is they are deeply involved in the problems themselves. And so better understanding them, I, I think, 
I think gives you gives you that potential. But you know, look, uh, coming back to this this concept of you know preparing children, right? Um, and what sort of what are the foundational um, bits of your education that are going to prepare you for the future? Honestly, I don't think anybody knows what the future is going to look like. I don't think any of our children are going to be the class of 2035, 2040. If anybody can credibly tell me what the world looks like in 2040, hats off to you, right? I, I just really don't think we, so, so they, I think there are two things that are crucial, right? We've talked a lot about one of them today, which is technology is a new language, right? As the ability to actually be fluent in something even reasonably, right? Because, you know, if you didn't learn English, if you are a generation, it, it puts you back, right? It's reality. I think the two, the second point, which needs more, needs more time and needs more incubation is actually thinking for yourself and thinking critically and giving people the tools to think critically. Look, I mean, what, but when, I, when I told my parents I was gonna study political theory and Russian literature in university, they were horrified, absolutely horrified, right? And they don't, and they were, they were thinking, there's nothing useful that can come of it. But I think what my education didn't give me is I can't code, but I, I think I can think really critically about issues. And so helping children understand that having a strong mind and having the ability to communicate is a hard skill, right? And I would say if, if you ask me working with our young companies in the region, one thing that I think everybody undervalues and underappreciate is sales, right? How do you actually go and convince someone to take a risk on you? How do you, you know, it, 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 I can, I'll ask you, I can only imagine you going out to your first, you know, enterprise clients and saying, hey, listen, like, you, you may not be able to pick Kosovo out on a map or Serbia or wherever, but you should take a risk on this. And here's why it's important. And look, I think we undervalue communication and critical thinking, and particularly we undervalue sales because we only see it when people are really bad at it, right? When someone's trying to sell you a car or upsell you something, then it's obvious, right? Because they're doing a really poor job of it. But I think pairing technology fluency as a language with thinking critically and thinking for yourself and knowing when to kind of, you know, buck conventional wisdom. Um, look, if the diaspora would be more honest about its experience and offer these sorts of mentorship lessons and, and help people sort of feel more empowered in their day-to-day -day lives, you know, then they become very, very loud voices for a lot of the improvement that the region absolutely needs. It needs more investment, it needs more interconnectivity, it needs better infrastructure, all of the above. But Artist Point is an excellent one. Right? You want your stakeholders to be educated about what they want. And a lot of their parents, I'm sure of your 800 children, know that they want their kids to have a better tomorrow, but they, they, they themselves may not know what that looks like. Let's, let's, let's help everyone understand what we all need. Amazing. Yeah, let's, let's make it more interactive. So if someone wants to jump in and uh, just uh, say something with regard to the previous speakers, please, please feel free. Astrid? Yeah, I fully agree with John. Um, he mentioned some of the difficulties we, we encounter every day. Uh, uh, that's what I was trying to say, but you speak English much better than, we, than I do. <laughs> uh, uh, what I was trying to say earlier on, and I, it consists with what you're saying, is that we're trying to build up skills that not, ne not necessarily are technological not necessarily our software development skills. What I was trying to, to say here is that uh, what I'm building up today in the company that I lead is uh, build up skills that are uh, necessary for them to explain to somebody else what technology is and what they can do to you know, propel, uh, advance their, their own operation, whatever it is. Uh, this is very important. The soft skills, um, that famous emotional intelligence, yes. Uh, that famous every related soft skills on customer oriented type of skills, it's, it's beginning to be much more important than it used to be. Uh, uh, the, I think this, this phase we are living globally today uh, explained and and showed it to us that we have to be closer together. Today we are fighting, uh, fighting together against something that we didn't know just a couple of months ago. 
So uh, this, I think, brought us together. I can say easily for my team, they, it brought us together. It uh, teamed us up. It literally brought more, uh, uh, more team efforts on everything that we do. So uh, I think that globally, uh, the skills that we are trying to develop is more, they, they need to be more human. Um, yes, we have to implement technologies to easier our lives. Uh, so we could have more time for ourselves. Uh, this is the main message uh, I'm trying to deliver to the to the to the team, uh, actually to my family as well. Um, we have to be closer together. That's what I wanted to add. Please feel free, uh, Marco or Arta. Um, yeah, um, I was curious to maybe also address uh, the skills. Of... So one, so one thing that I addressed in the beginning was that uh, my experience. So, so we do teach kids uh, technology, but that's one perspective. The other one is uh, I deal with youth in the in the perspective of actually hiring them and uh, onboarding them into into the companies, um, Labox and Jquarters both. Um, and uh, the challenge is there. So, so this age range that has already went through primary education and then and probably also finished university and their mindset is quite, quite interesting, especially he, here in the region. And I think that that is also very important to address. Um, from what, from what I see, um, when working with with youth on on this end, it's um, quite a lot of time. I, I would maybe describe it as confusion. It's a unclear path. Uh, they don't usually know um, should they continue master's degree. Some are more ambitious academically, just because that's a clearer path rather than something that would they would prefer to do. And then when when it comes to actually hiring, there is this perception that this is a, a region of high unemployment rate. And then, uh, I don't know, sometimes the highest ambition that you can encounter uh, after having a lot of conversations with them is they just want a job. And, and I had a bit, let's say, um, not ambitious enough, or I, I would just like to have them or see them dream more or Think of that. Think of their futures in a more bold way, and of what they can do and what they can create. And and from that perspective, I find a very simple framework to be very useful. And um, I, I know this is a bit cliche, but just make sure that you're maybe asking yourselves the right questions and kind of work on gaining the skills of knowing how to prioritize. Um, so so I find that that way of thinking. As simple as it is, really lacking in in, in quite br in broad aspects. And anyone from the panel that would like to maybe join me on this end, it would be great to to maybe create a bit of a more dynamic conversation around this. John, maybe you? Yeah, look, I, I absolutely love that. And I think that it's, these lessons are, there's a tremendous amount of wisdom in them. They're not difficult to pass on. Right. So, and by the way, I didn't learn them in university or in graduate school. I was just very fortunate to have mentors very young in my career that taught me this. So, you know, my, my, my first day of training as an investment banker on Wall Street, I was told that if you can't explain something to a nine year old, you're not doing your job. Right. This was, you know, a lot of what, what, um, what, you know, we just, we just talked about a moment ago. And, you know, art of this point you bring up about better engaging your mentors. Right is huge because there's so much you're either you're either lacking the ambition because your your idea isn't big enough where it should be and someone should push you or you're not really thinking about your your own your own journey and how you can actually make an impact how you can avoid competition right because there's so much of what we say publicly as as other business people or people in education or or, or what have you, or leaders of civil society, we all sort of do this dance of euphemisms, right? We all speak this sort of same cocktail party type language, but in reality, in our own personal lives, we do things very differently. Yes, we always want to talk about competition, particularly in capitalist economies, but 
In reality, as a business leader, I want to avoid competition, right? So how do I, as an individual, how do I, as a young student, realize I'm better at this one thing than everybody else in my class? Let me focus on doing that one thing. So those little lessons of mentorship or, you know, an old adage that I use all the time, which is tried and true is, you know, you ask, you ask for money, you get advice. You ask for advice, you get, you get money, right? So like all these sorts of conversations about when you have ideas and you start thinking about it, uh, just coming back one, one more point. I don't mean to go back to the diaspora point, but, but, but um, Sven, I, I, there's one more concrete answer to your question is that I think a lot of our entrepreneurs are, are, are undervaluing the intellectual capital that they could tap in the diaspora. I'm not talking about guys like me. I'm talking about, so I'll give you a concrete example. And, and um, Astrid, I'm, I'm breaking your rule of work hard in silence, right? So, but I'll talk about one of the projects that we're working on is uh, we're, we're incubating, you know, a telehealth platform. There is not a telehealth platform in the region. It's remarkable, right? When I tell people that in New York or in Florida, they, they just don't believe me, right? And so one of the things that we're trying to figure out is how do we tap into all of the medical professionals abroad? who, you know, we talked about earlier the challenges of language, right? These people understand not just the, they're not just, you know, fluent in the language, they're fluent in the culture. And so how do you mobilize these people to, to add and create value and to have network effect, right? Which is all we're really talking about, right? Like how does the conversation become incrementally more valuable because another person has joined it and brought something else to the table? So I think there's potential there. Uh, thank you so much, guys. One technical uh, issue is that we are close to five hours with this forum, and the maximum limit of Facebook live stream is five hours. So it would be great if we start. Uh, it's better for us to close it rather than for Facebook. <laughs> uh, Marco, as the main organizer, um, and also Mishko, we from that group. Yeah, just wanted to actually ask Sonia to say a few words. Uh, Sonia, if you can hear me and you can. Uh... Sure, I hear you. I hear you. Sorry, I, I'm on the phone. It is not working that well, but I just wanted to, first of all, thank you all. This was absolutely wonderful exercise. You made me optimistic again because so many new ideas and so much wonderful energy. And please don't understand me wrong, especially from the uh, women part of this uh, uh, sessions. I mean, I am absolutely fascinated uh, with everybody, but especially them. And I do want to say that, in fact, uh, I am involved with a group of people who are very much and very long time engaged in education, thinking about what could be done to really shake the educational system in the times of pandemics. Because we all, all understand that what we have now not only in Serbia, but in the entire region, is not, as you said, much better, is not what we need to have. John was think, talking about critical education. We need, we need youngsters to be able to think on themselves, to understand why they need education and how to learn, and not only to be given tailor-made schemes that are boring to myself so i can imagine how boring it would be to my they are to my 15 year old grandson uh, so i would like uh, you all to uh, be as much involved as possible in the debates that will shape a new approach to education in general i think this is something that has to happen in the whole region by the way, I don't think we can do it one by one. I do believe, as it was said already, that we need an intensive and highly, uh, highly interactive communication in the whole region. 
to make the education ready for those, Sven mentioned, 80% of new jobs that will be created and not focus on what is necessary at this very moment. Uh, plus uh, the very fact that general education, that education uh, about those fundamentals that will help children, youngsters, to understand the world around them and to think about the future, I think this is absolutely must. And I would like, again, to invite you all to be part and parcel of those debates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Uh, great insights. Uh, thank you all. We are, we are running out of time. And um, at any time, Facebook can shut us down. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Jovanovic. We'll continue with uh, Orta. And finally, uh, Mr. Leti to close up the, the panel. Yeah, very, very briefly, obviously, thank you all for taking the time. And I, I'm very eager to visit you in Pristina. Um, look, it, it, my last message, uh, anybody listening to us or watching us who uh, has an idea or has ambition, uh, reach out and talk to somebody about it like this month. Um, get advice, reach out, you know, reach out via the IC the venture website. Um, uh, we have a team of people who are, are very eager to, to think through problems, think through opportunities. Uh, remember, asking for advice is, is the first step to getting funding and to, to taking some control of your journey. So um, I think there's a lot more room for, for collaboration and, and for great conversations like this. But I, I challenge everybody listening to us to, to do something about an idea you have and do it now. Arda? Okay. Um, well, my message would be to um, to address the youth. I also want to see them more ambitious. Uh, we need them. We need their energy. And uh, I would like to just send out a word of encouragement that they should believe in themselves more than they typically do and that they... Um, should use the structures that are already in place to kind of leverage, test themselves, put themselves in the field and, and see what type of learning happens from that. Um, I find uh, an important process, um, so as an entrepreneur, I continuously face things that I've never faced before. And uh, in that perspective, um, I think it is always very important just to, to spare some time for reflection and see and kind of just uh, gain understanding from, from that experience because I've, I found that that was uh, where most of our growth happened and I think that uh, that pr process in, in, in particular should, should be taken care of and um, um, try to understand that there is a process of thinking and try to uh, just not get overwhelmed by all the obstacles and all the hardship that comes but on a positive note, just keep a goal in mind and 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 chase after it like 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 it's the last thing you would do. <laughs> that's that's it from my side. Yeah. Thank you, Astrid. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, good talk. Uh, thanks everyone for having us. Thanks ICK and everyone for uh, meeting us. Uh, thanks to Miss uh, to Mrs. Licht for the. Uh, for the insights, uh, uh, my main message would be that we have to teach the skills. Uh, we have to be to know the technicalities, uh, and I'm a strong supporter of. Uh, we have to uh, learn to uh, coexist, behave, uh, emancipate as much as possible uh, our our students, our employees as well. Uh, that would be uh, the greatest, uh, the greatest uh, wish of mine in order for us to to expand ourselves in the market, our products, and our way of life. So, if, if this is a message, then that would be my main message. Then, uh, so thanks everyone. Uh, good to meet you. Good to have you as uh, co-talkers. Thank you so much. Um, in the name of ICK, uh, to all the partners. Uh, <laughs>
Of course, the business of the model is with that. We made it, guys. To report to Marco, George, Mitch, or the army. Thank you, everyone. A great day. And uh, stay healthy. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all. Ciao. Ciao. Thanks.